Well, good afternoon, everybody joining us for the live stream of the century. I might be overselling it right off the bat, but certainly the media has been talking about this totality thing for months, if not years. I remember the 2017 one. We were already talking about 2024 at that point, and here we are. The day has arrived, April 8th, 2024, the Great American Solar Eclipse. One of the things that I will be bringing you guys are live pictures from across the country provided by various sources, NASA, of course, Chief, chief among them. This is of a series of telescopes. So they have their own partner network that they are working with to bring up, bring us close-ups of the sun as the eclipse begins to settle in. Now we all know the main shadow is going to begin down in Mexico, make its way across. I've got a tracker up in the top left corner, and I really hope. I was kind of teasing this before we got started that this thing functions as it was tested. So eclipse2024.org, Dan, the man behind it, uh, open street map, getting the, the data all pulled together, assuming it works well. This is my favorite part of this whole live stream. We will watch from a, a Google map perspective as the shadow moves. So those that are in the path, you can see where it's at and as it's coming to you. For those that are not in the path, maybe you have friends that are in the path, you can check that out and follow along right there. And I even have a little bit of control over it. So I'll be able to zoom in to certain spots at certain times. For right now though, we're just waiting for that shadow to appear on our map. And in the meantime, we're gonna talk about probably the main topic that everyone wants to talk about at this point, the weather, yes, but I'm not gonna be the one to do that. No, I have got a special guest, my co-host for the first hour or so of this live stream, that is the new chief meteorologist of the Next Star Weather Center, Mr. Brian James, bringing him in now. Hey, Brian, how are you? I'm doing fine, Chip, how are you, sir? I'm great, and you actually, you're located down in Dallas, so you not only are gonna tell us about the weather, you will then be one of our live cameras as totality descends on the DFW area. Yep, and uh, we're waiting. We're about six minutes away from partial eclipse to begin, so mm -hmm. uh, getting close to that time already. And I will tell you, I got up this morning, and I live in Fort Worth, and I had to drive over toward the Dallas side, but when I got up this morning, there was a nice canopy of high clouds. I was like, okay, we can deal with this. And then about 9 o'clock, the low clouds started to roll in, and I'm thinking, oh, oh no. no. Yeah. But, but the atmosphere has mixed up enough. I'm going to step out because I'm – Okay. I'm be in the sun a lot today. Even when the sun is blotted, it's still going to be able to, you know, partial eclipse is still going to be able to burn you. But hey, you look behind me, you can see we have much better viewing conditions yeah. now compared to what we looked, what we saw this morning. So considerable difference. It is a very promising sign. And I'm kind of looking down to the, to the south and southwest. And there are some lower level clouds that are coming up. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we're going to have exactly ideal conditions to view the eclipse but it's going to be good enough compared to what it looked like earlier in the week, what it looked like in terms of, I mean, we have a threat for severe weather coming yeah. up later on today and tonight into tomorrow morning. So there's a lot going on down here. We're kind of squeezing in the eclipse before we have that threat for severe weather a little later on today. So a whole lot going on down here in North Texas. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, other parts of the yeah, country let's do as it. well, because we've got, uh, we got some weather graphics to show you. So I put on the uh, path of totality. You see it there. The blue line is the center line for the path of totality. Uh, the outer bounds, northern bounds, southern, ba southern bound are those salmon colored lines you see on the other side. So uh, zooming in down toward the, the DFW Metroplex and down across South Texas, uh, you can still see there's quite a bit of cloud cover that's streaming up from the south. So unfortunately down toward the south, like down toward San Antonio, Austin, it's not gonna be as ideal a view. Dallas, DFW, I think we're going to sneak in and see some pretty decent weather. Let's go up to the north and east a little bit more, talk about what's going on across parts of Arkansas into southeast Missouri, southern Illinois, southern Indiana. There are some clouds that are streaming to the north. It right now looks like some of those clouds could potentially impact uh, across southern parts of Illinois, southern parts of Indiana as well. Mm -hmm. uh, farther to the north and east, there's even a few showers once you head up towards uh, around the Buffalo area. So clouds, a few showers, and that's uh, that's going to be frustrating. But notice they're moving out pretty quick to the north and east. So between Buffalo and Burlington, there's likely going to be a batch of clouds. There's probably going to be some scattered showers uh, that will unfortunately probably have a negative impact on viewing conditions. Right now, that appears to be the worst location in terms of overall viewing. I don't think it's going to be completely overcast for the vast majority of the totality track. 
There are going to be some breaks here and there, but there are going to be some chunks, it looks like, especially to the northeast of Buffalo, uh, southwest of Burlington, that's probably going to have the area most likely impacted by cloud cover. Uh, now, I did have a question, and I also had a point that I wanted to bring up with this. This is current yep. conditions. It's backtracking up to now. It's not a future predictor. So everything we're looking at is going to change in the next hour, to your point. It's very similar. It'll keep moving. So, like, what's over Buffalo now hopefully clears out a little bit. But the question I had for you is can you tell with this equipment we have what type of clouds they are? Are they thin, high um, atmosphere, low, really dense, that kind of thing? Most of um, what I'm looking at now across, uh, especially the Northeast, if you have precip, odds are that you have some of those lower level clouds to go along with this. The farther back to the Southwest, so I'll kind of break, I'll kind of. Uh, back out a little bit further and talk about what's what's kind of going on in a general sense. Yeah. If you notice, there's a storm system that's across uh, yeah, parts of uh, Minnesota, the uh, the upper Midwest, uh, western parts of the UP of Michigan. So there's a storm system and it curls around and you can see how that cloud cover curls around all the way to uh, around so what we've been talking about between kind of Buffalo and Burlington. So as that low continues to move to the north and east, it's going to push that batch of clouds off to the north and east. Uh, as it moves away from the area of low pressure, it may help to break up some of that cloud cover. The farther you are away from the low, the, the less lift that you have in the atmosphere for those clouds to form. So there's still that glimmer of hope because we are oh, we're a couple of minutes away from, from partial eclipse and we're about, you know, an hour, uh, what, about an hour and 20 minutes to two hours away from uh, totality. So there's still some time for things to change, especially to the northeast, uh, farther back to the south and southwest. Uh, south Texas is still going to be in a bit of a struggle. There's just there's just no two ways around it. That storm system is is just it's too close. Okay. It's uh, and it's, it's it's bringing up too much cloud cover across uh, the, the far southern parts of Texas. But. We've got to, uh, we've got at least a decent amount of hope for uh, a large chunk of the path of totality. I think it's going to be it's going to be a good show for for a large chunk. Even though uh, earlier in the week it looked like a large part of the U.S. was was going to be disappointed, but uh, things are looking brighter this morning or well, now or this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and let's let's take a moment to talk a bit more about that path of totality. And I've got a great graphic here. You might have seen it places. Um, it's one made by the Associated Press. And so it's all over. But this is a graphic showing where totality is. And then for those of you watching who aren't in the path, it's showing what percentage of eclipse you're going to experience. A little bit later in this graphic, we'll see what that is expected to look like. The tricky part is though, and Brian, you might be able to attest to this as the, the resident scientist of this live stream, is unless you're in 100%, you really aren't going to see a difference without the solar glasses. And there's there's a lot of truth to that. Now, so I, I will caveat this by saying I have not personally experienced a Yet. total solar eclipse. This is my first one. Yeah. However, I've talked to a lot of people who have, who have been in one, and they say you could be in 99% coverage. You could be right there on the edge, but if you are not in totality, the experience is entirely different for those who are in totality everything you hear it's it everything people explain it's just it's such a crazy weird unique feeling so i am i am excited i am science geeked out ready to experience this to its full potential and it's i this is you know this is one of those once in a lifetime moments so yeah. if you're not in totality if you're not in totality you're like Man, I have FOMO. I uh, I just I <laughs> hate missing out. I just this this stinks. Okay, when's the next one? When's the one that, that oh, has yeah. the next opportunity? That is, that's a great that thing. That would be that's that's August twelfth, twenty forty five. Uh, so mark your calendar, August twelfth, twenty forty five. That one's going to slice across about the the southern U.S. I know it's going to go across like northern Oklahoma, and the path kind of slides down to the southeastern part of the U.S. I'll I'll get one of those. I'll get the graphic up. I'll find that graphic, and uh, we'll, we'll be able to show you know it what? a little later. I got you one better, Brian, because I came prepared. Got I've, got, I've got a bunch of video clips that, depending on what we talked about, <laughs> and one of them is with a gentleman with a, I want to say it was a, an observatory. We'll find out in a moment. But he actually has a globe that shows all of the paths of totality um, for this century. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead. This one is coming from... Uh, let me find it. Uh, WIVB, our Buffalo, New York station. So let's load this clip in and learn a little bit more about that. What I've got here is a globe that shows the path of totality, as it's known, for each of the eclipses through the rest of the 21st century. 
So for example, if you look here at North America, you can see the one that is coming across Buffalo on April 8th, 2024. But there's also a line on here for the one that happened in 2017 that many of us remember. And always the question is, when's the next one gonna be? Well, there's a line here showing the one in 2045, which will actually go right over Disney World. So that should be interesting. But yeah, there's a, on average a total solar eclipse every 18 months. The trick is being in the right place. Some of these only happen out in the ocean or in Antarctica or some place that's pretty tough to travel to. And he said it right there. The next one, Brian, as you alluded to over the U.S., yeah, 2045, but really it's every 18 months. You look at that globe, you see just how many of them occur on the Earth's surface. And so have, have you looked those up? Have you by chance uh, created any travel plans yes. to try and catch another one? Well, it, as a matter of fact, my, I, I was talking to my kids about this yesterday because um, – uh, my, my youngest was like, oh, it happened. It happens every 20 years. Like, no, it's not that kind of, of, of cyclical uh, type of that. It is closer to 18 months. But if you notice, look at all the varying past. There's, there's no, there's no uh, uniformity to this. It doesn't occur the same way. It doesn't occur yeah. in the same place each time. There's so much little variations, little differences. And, you know, you're talking about these massive amounts of distance. Um, and you know, it takes, you know, it takes that much time. You know, one AU, how many miles, how many million miles away? I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember the number off the top of my head. How many, how many million miles away the sun is compared to how close the, the moon is. So those little subtle variations, those little differences make all the difference in the world as to where the path of totality is and whether or not it's a total eclipse or an annular eclipse. So all those little things make all the difference. And it's interesting. We've got a number of articles up on whatever next star site you are watching this live stream on talking about the various science behind an eclipse, how the, the moon is on an elliptical path. So it's closer to the earth or further away. Obviously the earth has a tilt involved with that. Uh, there's recent news. This was probably the biggest news this past week that scientists assumed or, or figured the sun size and they were wrong about that by a little bit, we've just discovered. And so the path actually narrowed from what was originally predicted by about 2,000 feet. It wasn't that big of news that the size of the sun was different. But there really is a lot, to your point, of, of details that go into figuring out that path and why it's so varied. Curvature. I, I, I like the fact, though, that we are still willing to dive in and get those extra little bit of details. I mean, yeah. we have become so incredibly precise in the ability to do a lot of things uh, from a technical standpoint. You think about the, the advancement in technology just in cell phones in the last 10 years. Look at how far the advancements have come. And that's just not just in cell phones. And you look at the medical advancements, You look, the technology is there for us to have these exact measurements and be able to pinpoint uh, with great accuracy. And that, I, I'm gonna work on getting uh, the weather computer set up because I've got I've got a visual explainer of what the solar eclipse is, and, and there's also a few more points with it too. Perfect, because you know what I wanted to do next? Just springboarding off this conversation, another video clip, this one coming from our Austin station, KXAN, and they actually did an interview with a NASA scientist because they are doing experiments and conducting research while this eclipse is happening. So I'm gonna bring this clip up. Awesome. Brian, you reset the computer. I'll see you back here in just a couple minutes. <laughs> solar eclipse over central Texas, and NASA is planning to do some big science during this very rare event. Joining me today is Eric Christians to talk about what they're up to and what they're hoping to see. How does NASA use the eclipse to study the edges of the sun? NASA studies the atmosphere of the sun, what we call the solar corona. It's important because the Earth actually lives in the atmosphere of the sun. And so space weather is affected by what we, what's happening at the sun and understanding that is very important. With this total solar eclipse, we can actually get closer to the surface of the sun to study than we can using satellites in artificial ways of making eclipses. It's a coincidence that the moon is almost exactly the size of the sun. What do you guys see when you look at the surface? What are you noticing? What kind of atmospheric energy movement, cool stuff are you guys noticing? So the sun's atmosphere is really funny because it's hot. The corona of the sun gets up to a couple million degrees, but the surface of the sun is only about 6,000 degrees. And you think the further away you get from a fire, the colder it gets. Why the corona is so hot 
and why it's moving at high speeds, about a million miles an hour, the solar wind spreading out from the sun, are two of the big questions that we have. And close to the sun is where that atmosphere is being heated and accelerated, and that's where the action is happening. So that's where we want to study. Let me ask you about some of the other science that's occurring during the eclipse, specifically with students across the country. What are they up to? So we're launching a bunch of balloons. We've got a lot of citizen scientists also measuring things like temperature on the Earth, surface of the Earth. But understanding how the atmosphere responds to the shadow of the moon moving across it helps the atmospheric models that the weather predictors use. And so we can do better weather prediction by better understanding the Earth's atmosphere. And the students are going to be launching balloons into the upper atmosphere to study the temperature and what happens to the atmosphere as this shadow moves across. Super, super cool. Eric, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me this morning. All right, there's that interview again brought us to us by KXAN, our Austin TV station. Going back now to the NASA collection of telescopes, there's a bunch of partners there. As they aim them up at the sky, at the sun, you can see the eclipse itself underway. We don't have a totality shot yet, but we are seeing the moon cover the sun, cloud cover obstructing a bit of that view, which is why it went black there for a second. And I've got a couple of different feeds coming in to watch. One of them that graphic you've seen up in the corner, I'm just waiting. I believe once totality begins off the coast of Mexico, this little baby is going to work. I've got faith. I have to. It's the, it's the thing I'm most excited about in this entire live stream. Um, let's do another one of these recorded stories really briefly. Unless, Brian, are, do you want to, are you ready to come back on? Give me a thumbs up if you are, and I'll bring you back. Looks like you need another minute. Okay, cool. Um, so the eclipse history is a really neat story put together by WJW based out of Cleveland. And this one talks about um, not the history of an eclipse itself, because it's just planetary bodies, but the eclipse through history and really how it was viewed in ancient times. And here it is. I think an eclipse is cool even with your modern sensibilities. What do you think your great-grandparents times 50 thought when they saw the sun disappear the exact same way about 1,500 years ago? In northern Europe, they believed that the sun was being attacked by wolves. In Asia, the animal was a dragon. Some Native American and African civilizations believed the gods were fighting and saw the return of the sun after an eclipse as a sign that maybe they should learn to settle their differences here on Earth. Science tells us that there are no dragons or wolves eating the sun. At least we hope so. But the one thing we all have in common with our ancestors is that an eclipse fills us with wonder. It isn't that you feel small and you're anxious, though there were certainly cultures in the past who did feel that way. But now it's an opportunity to see your relationship with the grandness of everything and that you're a part of that. Case Western Reserve Distinguished Scholar Professor Deepak Sarma says even though different cultures from different parts of the world have different behaviors or different beliefs after experiencing an eclipse, they all have the same kind of reaction. They need to talk. The eclipse kind of moment as an opportunity for storytelling, right, which is surely something that all human beings share. We all share stories. And there are, of course, competitive stories. My story is better than your story, or my story makes more sense to me than your story does. But that's also the beauty and diversity of storytelling. Professor Sarma says there are certain events in everyone's life where people come together and share a profound experience. Take the 2016 Cavs Championship Parade through downtown Cleveland. It was a moment of joy that you probably shared with hundreds of thousands of people and a shirtless JR. You remember that moment, and you felt a connection with everyone around you. The total solar eclipse is a moment just like that. Every living creature feels this moment. And it's something that brings us together, unites us as a community of not just humans, but sentient creatures. Cats, dogs, monkeys in the zoo, they're all going to respond to this. Right? And it brings us all together. Professor Sarma says when you have special moments like this, it's important to stay in the moment. Because the second you pick up a phone to live stream to all three of your followers on Instagram, you take yourself out of that moment. This celestial show is something to enjoy as it is. It's a moment to share something amazing with millions of people and connect with them as you journey through this brief darkness 
and back into the light. So it's a really interesting way to think about your relationship with the universe, right? The, the universe is hopeful, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we can be hopeful too. In Cleveland, Roosevelt Leftwich, Fox 8 News. All right, there you go. I love my favorite line of that whole piece was don't take out your phone to share that live feed with your three Instagram followers. Be in the moment. Even if you have more than three, be in that moment. Right, Brian James? Absolutely. I, I am a huge proponent of put your phone down and experience this. Experience it, even if it's just for, for a few seconds, but absorb this. This is going to be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for the vast majority of us that want to see a total solar eclipse. There's going to be another opportunity. There's going to be other opportunities down the road, but for so many people, this is kind of that ideal situation. It's slicing up across a large part of the United States, so a lot of folks will finally get that opportunity to experience it. I mean, I'm getting my first chance, so I'm, I am looking so forward to it. And Kind of a little cloud update for the Dallas area. There are some more scattered, just low clouds that are coming up from the south, uh, but there, I can see that there are still some breaks out there, so we are still going to have uh, some decent, uh, decent viewing. As long as it stays like this, that's fine. Uh, starting to get that little bit of a bite taken out of the sun, so it's starting to show up already. So, Chip, how about I go about uh, talk about what is the anatomy of a solar eclipse? Let's do it. All right, so let's do it. Let's uh, talk about the grad. Let's uh, see what we have. I'm like, I gotta get my my glasses off so I can see the <laughs> graphics. <laughs> I put them together, but the sun's so bright with a with a laptop screen, it makes it a little bit difficult. Okay, yep. so obviously this is not going to be the scale, but here you go. So you have the partial shadow. That's the penumbra. That's the whole outside shadow that's not that's not the core shadow the core shadow is that middle part what we call the umbra that's the full shadow now the full shadow of course is the part that makes it the totality safe viewing tri uh, viewing tips and by the way i'm, I'm gonna i got back up because i did not uh, I, I did not cover this as, as extensively as i wanted to so let's go back through this because the setup is important you have yeah. the moon in between the earth and the sun so it, you have, if the moon's on the other side of Earth, then you have a lunar eclipse. But in this case, we're, we're talking about it being between the moon, between the Earth and the sun. So the moon will cast that shadow on Earth as, of course, the moon is still, it's a new phase, which means it lines up and it, it passes over our sky. When it's in a new phase, we don't see it because there's no illuminated side. Uh, to the moon because of course the, the moon is going to in some cases slide in between us and the sun sometimes it's a little farther up sometimes a little farther down that's why we don't always have a solar eclipse every time we have a new moon because sometimes that shadow uh, passes completely either well above or well below or you know either side of the of the earth but in this case we're talking about that shadow actually falling on the earth so penumbra and umbra the penumbra is that and a partial shadow and then the umbra is the main shadow so we do of course remind you always 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 have your have your glasses have your your solar eclipse glasses you need to have those on for the duration of the event if you're going to look up at the sun at any point during this event now you can take it off if you are in totality however there's only that time in totality that you can take your glasses off the rest of the time you want to keep them on. So if you're like right now, if you are anywhere down across the southern part of the U.S. where the partial eclipse has already begun and you want to look up and see that little bite of the sun taken out by the moon, you want to do it with your glasses on. And by the time we get to uh, the time of totality, it, of course, is going to darken quite a bit. And the biggest concern we have down here towards DFW is the amount of traffic and the concerns <laughs> about people stopping on the road yeah. that have all the signs down here that say, do not stop during the eclipse. Okay, so a couple of the bits of information about uh, safety tips. Sunglasses, regular sunglasses, welder's glasses, they do not provide enough uh, protection of your eyes. So do not use them to look up the eclipse. Use only solar, approved solar filters. There's a lot of the solar glasses that have been available for uh, the last several weeks, months, I bought mine last year with the annular eclipse that we had. It's even safer to observe it indirectly. You can make yourself a little indirect uh, way of doing a little paper plate, poke a pinhole in it, have another plate or another uh, uh, piece of cardboard or something. It will cast that image onto that second one. You just hold the one that has the pinprick up to the sun and the other one down underneath it, and you would be able to at least see an indirect view if you do do not have uh, the solar glasses. But uh, in the case of totality, that's about the only time really that you can take off those glasses.
And we can check in. I was doing that briefly while you were going through it with NASA's telescope feeds because that that totality is inching ever closer. This I don't yes. know exactly where this telescope is located, but the actual start of the Umbra will be happening out over the ocean. And we don't have a telescope over the ocean, so I imagine um, the, the Earth's first taste of totality will begin before it reaches the point we're watching here. But the coast of Mexico, that is landfall, so to speak, for the shadow. And we have a number of live pictures, thanks to NASA, thanks to the Associated Press, um, thanks to a bunch of partners that we will be tracking that. And then Brian and I are gonna stick with you up until it gets a little bit closer to the US border, when we're then gonna turn things over to our local teams, Next Star Media, owns or operates nearly 200 TV stations across the country. And wouldn't you know it, almost the entire path of totality we have covered through Nexstar TV stations. Uh, Brian, would you be able to reset the Max computer just to cover clouds one more time? Yes, I think absolutely. we've gained enough new viewers, and I'll take you off so you can take care of that. I think we've gained enough new viewers that we might have some questions percolating out there. And in the meantime, I will show one more of these stories. Oh, this is a good one. It's an associated press story, how animals react during totality. So let me bring that one in. Clip number six. We observed a lot of animals during the 2017 eclipse. One of the animals we watched was the Komodo dragon. In general, a Komodo dragon sits still for almost all hours of the day. And just in those couple minutes during the eclipse, it started running around and had a reaction. Animal behavior is only actually a small part of the research we do. Mostly we study skulls and we do dissections of animals. But there was just this amazing opportunity where we were in 2017 in South Carolina, the Riverbanks Zoo, to see these animals in, in this interesting phenomenon. And I think I basically became hooked. Some of the animals behaved as if evening had come, so they went into their nighttime routine. Some of the animals made strange calls, the siamangs. They made a type of vocalization that we had never heard before. This time around, we're going to look at some of the same types of animals. Texas is the first place in the United States that the eclipse will be passing through. There are other really exciting places that these types of observations could be done. I'd like to see our research expanded into different species and see if gorillas react this way, how do orangutans react and how do bonobos react? The flamingos all gathered around their chicks during the eclipse, like they were trying to protect the chicks. It may be really interesting to see if other flamingos do that or if other flocking birds do the same type of behavior. In any given part of the world, a total eclipse occurs once every almost 400 years. Essentially everything we know about animal behavior during the eclipse could reasonably be regarded as anecdotal because there's so little information about it. But the only way that we can confirm this stuff is to take every opportunity that we can to go out and, and witness it ourselves. It's my sincere hope that other scientists will eventually join along. And you know what other scientists are going to be? We at Nexter Media have done many stories. Many of our markets have local zoos and almost all of them have said, yes, we have researchers out who will be observing the animals during that roughly four minutes of totality. Obviously, that number depends on exactly where the zoo is located in the path. Speaking of, I have seen so many comments. We are live streaming across Nextar Media Station sites, as well as through YouTube via The Hill, one of our websites through Nextar Media, and Facebook, uh, WFLA, and they're sharing that out with a number of Facebook pages as well. Lots of people checking in, hey, what's the specific time that it's coming to my area? And what didn't you know it? I've got a map just for that. It moves pretty quick. You know, it's elapsing like an hour's worth in a minute, 30 seconds. So pay attention now. If you've been looking for what time it's going to hit your area, watch this graphic. Number three, here we go. So there's a start in Texas. Time on the top left, that will change time zones as it gets there, and I can even replay this one time, just so everyone's had the chance to eye their town. And this again, specifically the path of totality there, all the way up through Indiana, Ohio, touches Pennsylvania, into upstate New York, across Vermont and Maine. 
Let's let it play back one more time, and then I'll bring Brian James back, and we can hit on the weather outlook for that exact same path. So everyone out there knows if you're in the path, what kind of chance you have at seeing the perfect totality, no clouds, versus a little bit. And we'll also touch on what you'll experience if you have clouds, because there is still something to experience in totality. All right, reaching the tail end of that map. So I'm going to bring Brian back in now. And uh, is, um, are the map graphics ready? Should I just bring them in right away? Well, I, I, was, I was also going to say that I can take that graphic that you just showed, <laughs> and I can show it a lot slower. Oh, so look at that. If we do, if we do want to go by it a little bit, uh, a little bit slower, then we, we can certainly do that. Um, although... Well, that one's for you, right? So we'll see it hitting you at about two forty. I'm, I'm I'm looking at this and it, it's showing it's showing two forty for totality. I know it's one forty, so the the clock is off. So, and I, oh. like, I why why are we looking? Because I, I I know totality oh, is at yeah. one forty. I have said it so many times in so many places. Was and, mine right? So that, now I got to question things, mine. So. Oh, mine was off by an hour. Also, we're using the same uh, okay. system. That's the problem. <laughs> Yeah, so that that's that's probably the say that the 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 issue that we are dealing yep. with. So um, I can I will I will make an adjustment. To I'm that. glad you caught the, that because I sure did. Fix the clock. I'm gonna fix the clock, and, cool. and we'll come we'll come back to that here in a little bit. But you did talk about this before, so I want to come back around to yes. this. Uh, we were talking about uh, the satellite images and and how it looks right now. So let's bring those weather graphics back up with the with the satellite image, and you can see how uh, we're looking at satellite and radar combined across the entire U.S. So let's put on that path of totality so you can see where there's going to be some hindrances of some clouds focus in first down across parts of texas uh, metroplex down towards uh, san antonio san antonio's got unfortunately quite a bit of cloud cover around but uh, things are breaking up nicely up here uh, right around dallas now going up to the northeast from there looks pretty like pretty decent for the folks across arkansas southeastern sections of missouri there's likely going to be a little bit of cloud cover as you go into southern illinois south south central parts of of indiana as well there will likely be some mid high clouds right now it looks like probably some of the worst viewing conditions will be to the east and northeast of cleveland uh closer to between buffalo and burlington you see some of the clouds and some of the scattered showers but they are moving off to the east fairly quickly so especially on the back edge of that you folks in buffalo you're, you're probably sweating bullets like okay are we gonna be able to get these clouds out of here in another Enough time to be able to see it it's going to be close i think it's going to be close but i think uh, still i think a large part of this path of totality for a large chunk of the u.s uh, will have at least the ability to see some of the eclipse there's going to be very few locations that are going to be completely overcast i think mostly to the uh, northeast of buffalo between buffalo and burlington uh, and to the south as uh, south of dfw down uh, down closer towards uh austin san antonio uh the cloud cover certainly looks thicker down there too and can you again touch on the type of clouds that uh, we might be seeing in those specific areas because i'm sure people will yeah. be asking that sure so like for for the case here in dfw we had some mid and high clouds earlier in the day but now we have the scattered uh, lower level clouds or what we typically would call fair weather cumulus clouds mm. and and those you know just kind of occasionally will, will blot out the sun in its entirety and, and then of course the sun comes back out a little bit the mid and high clouds that are out there those are more of those milky white kind of thin layers of higher clouds that are made of uh, composed of ice crystals now those can be thick enough to completely obscure the sun Although most of the time in a situation like this, those high clouds aren't going to be quite as thick. So we should be able to still at least have a filtered look at some of the sunshine. So as you're looking at some of this, and I'm going to go back to uh, the original satellite radar image that doesn't have quite as much uh, on it so that you kind of get a little bit of a better look at this. Um, most, let's see here, I'm looking for my, uh, where is my pointer? Who has my pointer? Somebody moved my pointer that's okay um oh there it is all right so when you're talking about the clouds lower level clouds the closer the closer you are to the gulf of mexico uh, the more it's going to be some of these lower level clouds so across about especially about the southern uh third or so of texas those are going to be those lower level clouds that are are likely going to obscure the sun uh, completely as you move farther up if you follow the showers that's mostly where those uh where scattered lower level clouds are going to be but uh, on top of that you're going to have the mid and high clouds that are streaming up as well so mostly on the back side of where you see some of these showers that's where those mid and high clouds will likely kind of filter out some of that sunshine so for a large part of the path 
the totality, it's mostly going to be mid and high clouds. And of course, we're talking about the uh, large part of the entire U.S. Uh, seeing some of the uh, some uh, seeing the eclipse, maybe not in totality. So you go across the northern plains, the Dakotas, into Minnesota. Yeah, you got the storm system. So unfortunately, you're not even going to be able to see the uh, you know 60 to 80 percent coverage uh, that you would be able to see uh, if it were clear. So there are going to be some spots in the U.S. that aren't going to be able to experience the eclipse at all. 2045 is uh, not that far away, right? No, right? no, not it's that not. Far away. <laughs> so I've gotten a couple of requests to add okay. in this specific shot, the NASA telescope feed, as <coughs> totality is approaching. And so here's what I'm going to do. Um, you all, I'm going to put up a fun camera. It's my behind the scenes camera so you can watch me work. But I'm going to do that very quickly and just let the music jam here for a minute, just so that way we can fulfill that request. an eerie feeling when it starts to get uh no i i mean i could have i, I easily could have could have filled some time i was just uh, i was just i was just talking about how it's starting to get that that sense of it's starting to dim just a little bit you kind of get that feeling like it doesn't seem as bright as it did before so the 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 dimming effect is starting to uh, starting to, to be noted here down in dallas yeah. Yep, I can see you. Ah, very nice. Nice addition. Nice addition, yes. My mic has been muted this whole time, Brian. You could hear me because of our IFB, but I didn't unmute myself. So, uh, where's the comments? Where's the comments telling me that my mic was muted? They gotta be somewhere. Anyways, uh, I've added in <laughs> the live picture. It's a live stream. This is live internet, folks, this is what happens. Uh, the live stream that we're getting from NASA and their partners in the telescopes as totality approaches. And as soon as it begins in that map, there's a comment, Jody, bring in, I'll, I'll go ahead. There we go, no volume. Can't hear you. Chip's audio is off. Thank you, everybody. There must be a delay going on. Um, I'm sorry. So you've got a cool graphic that you just brought in. Yes, I decided up. just just to bring that up and throw that up, just because uh, we were talking about like the 60 to 80 percent coverage across the uh, the northern plains, and this yeah. is kind of what I was talking about. So you have the path of totality, and as you, of course, you go away on on, on either side, um, you decrease, of course, the the percentage. So. Um, it's okay. It, you know, it's still a really neat experience. Uh, one of the cool things that people really like to see is when you, if you have like, like leaves moving and you see the shadows on the ground, as we go into more of the eclipse, you're going to start to see some of those eclipse looking uh, shadows. And it's, it's really, it's one of those cool, unique things that happens during an eclipse. And I'm really excited, Brian, because I am not in the path. Not even close. I'm I'm Chicago area there, but you are, and I'm going to live vicariously through you and your very first experience. And maybe I'll be one of those people that is booking a trip to Greenland. I think that might be the next next one, like 18 months from now, to try and experience oh. it. I, I know, right? It sounds like a pretty neat trip. But one of the things that people talk about that I've heard multiple times in, in the number of stories that we have done collectively as Nextar is that it can be a life-changing moment for people. Uh, in fact, Don't sure. I have a case in point here. Do you know who Tom Skilling is by chance? 
Oh, absolutely. I watched Tom when I was growing up in Michigan. I watched him and I watched him do his long weather cast. And I was amazed at how many maps he would always go through. And boy, that, that helped fuel my meteorology fire. And those never changed. He retired for, officially from WGN in February. But in 2017, yep. they had him in Carbondale, Illinois to experience mm -hmm. totality. And I believe it was his first as well. And then they put together a little highlight reel. Now, what's really cool, he retired, yes, he's back today. He will be once he's again taking today. part in totality in Southern Illinois. So I'm hoping I'll be able to bring him in live as a part of our continued Next Star media coverage. But until oh, that time, let us go ahead and witness another meteorologist's first time experiencing totality. We've been told people start sobbing. Uh, and for some, it's just a life-changing event. And we may start doing that too. <laughs> <laughs> he's already sobbing. <laughs> But I'll, I'll, t I'll get my act together, guys, <laughs> and I'll be back to you. I promise you. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, oh, look at it. Oh, look at Look at that. Look at that. Oh my word. Wow. This is amazing. What do you think of this, guys? Wow. You did it. Congratulations. <laughs> Where, where are you going to be in seven years? I don't know. I think we're going to be back here again. All right. You know? All right. This is we'll see you, and wouldn't you know it, that is exactly what the plan is for Tom Skilling, now retired chief meteorologist of WGN. He is back in Southern Illinois today. I am located physically inside the WGN newsroom, so I have access to all that station's live feed. So I'm hoping that I can even bring back a, a 2024 version of Tom Skilling for you here on this live stream as we connect our coverage from border to border, essentially. So what you're seeing now the top corner, that is our, let's see if I can bring the whole thing up full with a push of a button, there we go. That is from NASA using the, a number of partners that have telescopes aimed up at the sun as the totality eclipse approaches. I'm continuing to watch this tracker function that I've got. And I'm, I'm really, really hoping it works. Uh, and I will be able to then bring that to you full and we'll follow it along as it progresses over Mexico into the US and then across the country. Brian, what are you going to be doing um, while you're waiting, after we cut away from your and my part of this shindig and actually start doing our, our coverage brought to us by the local Next Star stations? That's a good question. I, I... <laughs> well, that's, so what you're doing right now, this is actually the what I was wondering. I didn't know if you'd be putting on your glasses and watching <laughs> oh, as it moves. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, this is... And this is I live for this stuff. This is you know, <laughs> I, I I I go I go back to my days of you know I I've had a, a passion and interest in meteorology for a long time, um, but I also had a passion and interest in, in doing space. And I even went to Space Academy uh, back when I was like a freshman oh, in high school, that's so a cool. long time ago. So I I had that opportunity experience. So this this uh, I I have waited, I've waited 48 years for this opportunity to finally be able to see a total solar eclipse. So you I am beyond excited. You're going to become an umbrophile. Have you heard that term? <laughs> an umbra yes, umbrophile. I, I learned it, it. I have heard it while before. preparing for this live stream, essentially. I interviewed uh, the man behind Eclipse2024.org. That's the guy that is providing that shadow tracking map that we're about to find out if it works or not. And he is an umbrophile and he makes his travel plans with totality. So he knows that he's gonna be oh, in Greenland in, in two years. Like I said, I think, that, I'm pretty sure that's the next one. And then when it's in Spain and then um, 2045, if he's still around, like he's got those plans all set because- I, see. I, yeah. I wonder I wonder if it's one of those things that once you experience one, you wanna keep experiencing it. And if that's the case, sign me up, I'm all for it. <laughs> you are signed up and that, you know, keep that in mind because we'll come back to you to see you witness it live which will be really cool. Oh, yes. But then, yes, as will. long as yes. you've got the time, Brian, when it's all said and done, I want to pop back and just kind of debrief with you so you've had that okay. moment to breathe and absorb what has happened to you, and then we can hear what it was like on the ground. Absolutely. I, I am all for it. 
Awesome. So it is coming up on one o'clock central. Um, our coverage is already underway. I'm gonna show you guys a neat, don't go anywhere, Brian, but I'm gonna show everyone else kind of a neat setup. I've been monitoring multiple feeds coming in. So you're seeing a mix. Um, Brian is actually in that feed right now too of <laughs> some of our next door station sites. I've got that <laughs> uh, NASA feed, I've got an AP feed. So Austin, Waco, Tyler, Shreveport, Little Rock, Southern Illinois, Evansville, Terre Haute, Indianapolis. That's just what I have on this one monitor. And then it keeps going on down. I, I've got, let me see, where did I leave off? I'll put myself back on camera for that one. Uh, I left off here, Indianapolis. And then into Ohio we go, Dayton, Cleveland, Erie, Pennsylvania, Buffalo, New York, Syracuse, New York. Burlington, Vermont. So we have stations in every single one of those cities, every single one of those markets that has some kind of coverage planned. And we're gonna be connecting that for you right here. So this is not a CNN case. They've got their own crews spread out. Maybe they're from the area, maybe they're not. Maybe they've got like four cameras along the path. No, this is your local Nexstar station covering totality and that market, which is really cool. So we have that local perspective, the local expertise, and frankly, the local cameras. So we really on this live stream, we're going to get to experience totality clouds willing uh, for nearly the entire trip across the US and we're seeing up here. It is getting closer. Uh, that actually reminds me, Brian, I wanted to touch back on one thing. Another question that people have popped up because I imagine many of our viewers are not in the path because they're, they're locked in in that moment. And so they have some kind of percentage coverage of this eclipse. And we've talked before, I just wanna reiterate, there, it's a night and day difference quite literally from being in the path of totality to even just outside of that path of totality. Oh, ab absolutely, yeah. Even, even if you're, if the difference between totality and, and non-totality is, um, it, it's, from what I understand, for those who have who have oh, I've talked to you about it before, it's a considerably remarkable uh, difference, and it's just it's one of those things that I because I, I've you know I've been in partial I've been you know the annular last year I was that was a decent coverage but this I this is just it's different and I I can't wait for that experience this is just it's, I'm geeked I, we're we're how how you says one o'clock now so we're like forty minutes away yeah yeah oh this is gonna be excited I'm already excited <laughs> yeah so it's about forty minutes away from Dallas um, from the U S border we're closer to. 30 minutes, 25 minutes away. And then from there, each one of those markets that I was listing, it's it's like four to five minutes off. And right through that center line, it's approximately four minutes of totality. So that's what I say, I'm gonna have nearly an hour straight coverage of totality. I really mean that, thanks to the positioning of our next star station sites. Uh, yeah, just yeah, TV stations. You're gonna be all set up. You're gonna be good to go. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I, we've got YouTube going through the hill, one of our, our next star station websites. And then my YouTube is live, uh, Facebook pages are live. A couple of the comments I just wanna address quick, like one person saying, hey, show the eclipse already. I, I can't. It's not happening yet. <laughs> we're working on it. Stick around. Um, another person, a number of people actually in the standby were asking, what is that music? Have you, you can't hear this music, can you, Brian? I can't hear the no, music No, because of how we have the Zoom set up. So when we're all done, you'll have to pop back. I'm going to pop it up loud real quick. I'll just groove for a second. Because that was going to the standby and people were saying like, man, I'm really grooving to this music. What is that track? <laughs> Honestly, I don't remember the name. It's something off of universal production music, meaning that it's music designed for broadcasts and live streams. But I spent about an hour searching through their music library for what I thought was the perfect Eclipse music. So I'm appreciating <laughs> the comments, the payoff, Brian. I'm getting the payoff there. You, 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 the time you spent finding that music it served you well. It yes. served you well. Okay, so I fixed the clock. So oh, if we want to go back yes. through and this talk is what about people want to know of totality. So let, let's do that. So as uh, this comes up, San Antonio, right on the edge of of totality. There, you're talking about 1:33. So here in just about 30 minutes. Yep. As you head up towards Waco, you're talking about 1:37 or so. Uh, for DFW, we're talking about 140, 141, peak of which should be right about 142. As you come up, there's Texarkana at 146. Hot Springs, Arkansas, 148 to 150. Little Rock, 152. 
Uh, same thing for Conway. Jonesboro, Arkansas, about 155. Let's head on over towards uh, parts of Paducah, Kentucky. You're talking about totality taking place right around 2 o'clock just south of St. Louis. Uh, as we keep going up, there's Evansville, Indiana, about 201 to 202. Terre Haute, Bloomington, up towards Indy. My sister is just outside of Indianapolis, nice. so she gets to experience totality as well, which is really cool. They're looking at about 306. Now, keep in mind, we're talking Eastern time. So notice we did switch yep. from 2 o'clock Central time to 3 o'clock Eastern time. So we're going to try to keep track of that t of the uh, time zone as well. Uh, Muncie, Indiana, 307. Dayton, Ohio, about 309. Uh, Springfield, Ohio, about three, about 309 to 310. Uh, for Toledo, it's going to be about 312. For Columbus, you're just outside that path of totality. Uh, that's going to be right around 312. For Cleveland and Akron, you're talking about 313, 312 to 313. Just outside of Youngstown, Erie, 315 or so. Buffalo, New York, you're looking at about 318 to 319 in the afternoon. Rochester, about 320. Uh, Syracuse about 322 Waterton about 322 as well get it closer to 333 Burlington 326 or so for totality there and then as you head up into parts of Maine I'm talking about it finally um, <clears throat> excuse me about 332 and it looks like the edge of the totality will move out at around 435 in the afternoon Lots and lots of places, lots and lots of experiences. Lots of folks are going to get that opportunity to to experience totality, and that you know, honestly, that that makes me happy when people can get immersed and experience some of these events that take place in our lives, and they're excited about it. It's just, it's really cool. I love when people get excited about stuff like this. So, Brian, the the NASA telescope stream, <clears throat> it's looking like where they're at, they are very close to getting that start of totality. So I'm going to put this up so Ooh. we can catch this live. You can see it a little bit on your phone. <clears throat> and yep. while we're doing that, I think one thing that has been asked as well is if you're in the path and it's cloudy, what happens? What, what can you see? What can you experience? So uh, if you're in totality and it's, and uh, you have an overcast sky, the biggest thing you will, you'll experience is just the fact that it's going to look like night for about about two minutes um, with the cloud cover and totality. It's gonna, the street lights are gonna come on. Um, you may have some animals acting a little bit unusual around you as well, but mostly it's just going to be exceptionally dark for about two or three minutes and then it will gradually start to lighten again. So this is great. We are right here, right on the edge, wherever this first telescope is. <clears throat> we are watching the, most, the smallest slimmer of the sun sliver disappear and this camera, in order to capture this, has to have a special filter on it. So what I imagine they're going to do is remove that filter and actually show what it looks like from this perspective of totality. So we're going to stick with this live. I, I, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look at this myself with my with my glasses. I'm gonna I'm gonna put my glasses back on and look at this. We're about uh, yeah yeah. yeah. We're about Check it out from one Dallas. One third cover, about uh, one third at this point. So uh, we're, getting, we're, getting pretty, we're getting pretty good so far. Um, and I'm keeping your mic open, Brian, as, as we just watch this okay. NASA feed there. Okay, they've just taken the filter off. This is it. So here's that moment, that little and bit of the sun. The diamond ring. Yeah. There's the diamond ring. And as the diamond ring goes away, and this is a good, this is a good thing to, to talk about. You see the diamond ring on the on the upper left part. When that disappears, now you can take your glasses off if you're in totality. So this is that so moment for those that, that are in a position to see this right with here. their own eyes. Yes, if you are in totality, this is the moment when you can take the, the glasses off. Once the diamond ring disappears, then you can do it. So uh, this uh, that's that's all. I cannot wait to have the, to have this experience. This is just going to be really really cool. I will say for my part. Um, it does not look, I mean, it looks cool, but seeing it through a screen and knowing that you're going to see it with your own eyes, I'm so, so jealous of you. <laughs> I'm so, so jealous. I, I, I am bummed that you, I'm bummed that you're stuck in Chicago. You should have been down here. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Oh, all right. I have confirmation. I actually, my, my shadow tracker was working. I had to refresh the page. So here we go. That yes. is, they are, that is in Mexico and Mazalan and the, 
landfall has happened. So we are at the beginning. There are people on the ground in Mexico experiencing this right now. This is the totality as it begins to make begins to make its way across land. So you see that now in the and upper so you left. Mark the time. Yeah. You mark the time about 106, 107 or so. And keep in mind that we just went through that whole path and it's going to be done by about uh, about four o'clock, four, four thirty Eastern time. Right. So three, that, I mean, it's going to traverse the entire U.S. in just two hours. I mean, I have a hard enough time getting on from one side of DSM <laughs> to the other in two hours. I mean, it's going to go all across almost the entire U.S. in that in that span. So that just tells you how fast this is going to take place. Yes. So we are witnessing this live, seeing totality in Mexico from that telescope. Top left of the screen, you are now seeing that <clears throat> tracker brought to us by ellipse2024.org. And by the way, Dan, with that website, he's got his own live stream going somewhere. Um, I have messaged him to try and find out where so I could just <laughs> let people know. I think he might be on Twitch. I think he might be on YouTube, but Eclipse, not Ellipse, Eclipse2024.org. And uh, that is a, a true umber file. This is awesome. I'm sticking with this shot until it's gone. And then I'll bring it back. We can reset a little bit. And then, Dan, you and I need to, what in the biz we call tap dance, just a little bit longer until we get <laughs> the Umbra to the U.S., where then our local coverage will really pick it up, um, beginning with our closest station, KXAN in Austin. And so we'll tap into their awesome. special coverage. But, yeah, this is, I mean, That's... this is cool because this is lasting the length of time that they've been talking about, about four minutes. And yeah, even with the light clouds, wow, you're seeing- And by the way, the, the peak of the eclipse, yeah. the, the, the apex of the eclipse is actually to the southwest of the US. It's, it's in uh, north central Mexico. So um, at the, the peak of the eclipse will actually occur in terms of like its overall coverage, the most coverage, the longest time in totality is just to the south. Mm. I wonder if we'll have a telescope shot or a NASA shot or an AP shot. I'm watching so many different feeds, y'all. We're going to bring you what we can no, here. I, I know you're watching a ton, <laughs> uh, but that just basically means that's the longest of totality. It's it, it'll look the same. It's just going to be the length is going to be the it's going to be the longest for anybody else. It looks like and with totality, I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be close to three to three and a half minutes for wow. Uh, for Mexico down here and I posted it on my page I I posted it and then I forgot what the number was but I, I want to say it's I want to say three minutes and it's I want to say three minutes and 51 seconds for for Dallas for for totality it's it's one of the longer that's ones. awesome so it's, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be really cool so it looks yeah. like we're, so. we're starting to see the edge of the disk of the sun it's brightening on the right hand side what's really cool I don't know if yep. you can make it out on your phone but it, it almost looks like we're seeing like coronal ejections yep there's Bailey's beads okay so there's the diamond ring on the other side so now you gotta yep. put your glasses back on yeah and so <laughs> that's so anyone anyone else say so this is this was a good little uh good little dry run for everyone in the US who's watching if you are if you are in totality you got a chance to see that total, uh, the, the totality from when the diamond ring disappears to when it reappears. And it's when it disappears, you take the glasses off. When it reappears, you put it back on. There you go. Telescope. Thank you so much, telescope operators, for showing us the proper way to <laughs> put on the filters and take off the filters. And so totality has concluded there in Mazatlan, Mexico. But now we've got this tracker actually working. Let me bring it up full <coughs> just to show everyone this is where the shadow is, where that umbra is of the path of totality. And it will be moving across Mexico at a steady pace. Do you by chance, Brian, off the top of your head, know the speed at which it is moving? Ooh. Um, I, you know what? I actually do I, have it if you don't. I, I, I don't. Off the top of my head, I didn't do the research. It's okay, because I have the numbers right here. This I didn't even realize it. It is moving at 1,572 miles per hour. Wow. For those that wow. prefer kilometers, 2,536 <laughs> kilometers per hour. That is the speed, the shadow on land that is moving across the earth right now. That's so cool. That's, <laughs> that's just, it's just neat. I, I just, all, all of it is neat. It's, it's just, it's cool. And you think about, you know, think about that 1,700 miles an hour. Hey, why don't we hit weather one more time? Now that we're getting yeah, a little bit let's closer. Do 
now that yep. it's it's yep. on the way to the U.S. While you're doing that, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull off all of those tweaks that I made so we can watch the shadow officially now that it's here. Yes. Okay. So here's a look at the the U.S. view. And again, you know, we talk about totality. We've been focusing on totality. Um, so there's the path of totality. But again, you know, as it expands out and you have less coverage to the northwest or to the southeast uh, you can use the clouds a little bit accordingly i mean if you have parts of louisiana mississippi uh parts of tennessee where you have the clouds and the rain showers and folks i'm sorry it's it's you're gonna have to live vicariously through some of the dill streams you're seeing uh because uh, it's just it's gonna be it's gonna be a struggle for you to even get a peak of sunshine uh most of the path of totality looks like there are at least a few breaks in the clouds there are a few exceptions to the northeast but most of uh the the southern uh north of say San Antonio or Austin area, they, they do have some clouds down there. Dallas, you can see behind me what we've got cloud cover wise. We've got some breaks in the clouds. So it looks like uh, it's even moving out for you, Brian. Like the yeah, so, uh, yeah, there are. It's there. There's actually additional clouds farther south. I'm, I'm kind of looking. We've got you know we got that threat for severe weather coming up later on today. So mm -hmm. we are increasing our low level moisture, which is why we are starting to see a few more of those clouds around. Uh, but um, but we will still have enough. We'll have. We'll have enough breaks. We have we have enough breaks coming here and there, and during totality, we're, we're going to get at least uh, at least a partial look at it. Uh, but looking up the rest of the path of totality across parts of Arkansas is not looking too bad. Southern parts of, uh, of Missouri, around Carbondale, Illinois, where where Mr. Tom Skilling is going to be hanging out. There yep, are yep. some clouds out there. Uh, we're going to try to get those I'll scoot a little farther to the south and southeast for him. Uh, but then there's also a little bit more cloud cover as you head up towards uh, Buffalo, between Buffalo and Burlington. is kind of one of the areas we've been focused on a little bit more. For you folks in Buffalo, it's going to be close. Cleveland, I, you've already cleared out. It looks like mostly clear skies for, for Cleveland now, but Buffalo... <clears throat> Uh, the showers have departed, so now it's a race against the clock. Can we get the cloud cover to clear out before the umber reaches you? And I think I think it's going to be I think it's going to be doable. I like your optimism. Hey, you, you got to be optimistic in the case like this. <laughs> uh, so I've been watching the feeds. I don't have I don't have another one showing totality right now, and that is in large part due to the network that NASA had pre-established. But we do now have our map tracker going live and accurate. And so I can zoom in here. We've already moved well away from the coast of Mexico, coming up on another major city in that country as it inches ever closer to the U.S. border. And at that point, we're going to turn things over to our oh, yeah. local coverage. Um, one thing that I was... You know, we, we got a little bit of time to fill, Brian, so I feel like you and I can tell two stories. Um, I'm going to tell one about how I was almost in Dallas today on accident, and then you can tell one about what you did this morning. How about that? Ah, yes. Okay. I, yeah. So mine. A little something this morning. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So mine first. I, I'm in the Army Reserve, and I my unit is based in Oklahoma. I had to fly through DFW last night, and my flight from Oklahoma to, to Dallas was so delayed that they auto rebooked me while I was on the plane for, for oh. a flight today. And I, oh, it was gonna be awful. And I was gonna probably sleep in the airport. And then I was thinking to myself, I'm like, I mean, at that point, should I just go to where Brian's at? And just, we try and do this live stream that way. And then I could experience totality. I almost thought it. I, 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 I would have done it. I would I, I would have done it. I would have figured we it out. You off. We, we could have we we, we would have figured out a way to do it. I, we would have figured out a way. I, I, I tell you, it would have been it would have been awesome. Well, but, and uh, that's what makes well, it so funny that you were talking about traversing the DFW airport because that was me last <laughs> night sprinting through the airport <laughs> to make it home, and that's not a long, it's not a short run. So yeah, that was my uh, uh, my little story about today and almost being in Dallas. But then you. Marking Eclipse Day, so so to speak, in a pretty special way. Uh, yeah, my uh, my fiance and I decided to uh, to get married this morning. Well, I mean, it's in the state of Texas, you common law. It's common law marriage, um, and in the state of Texas, it identifies you as husband and wife. But you can make note of it at the county clerk's office, so that. You know, for tax purposes and insurance, all that other, you know, adult <laughs> stuff, you know, it's, it's, it, you can, you can call yourself husband and wife. So, um, for that purpose, we thought, you know what, we're going to do that today because yeah. we want to have that cool date for the timestamp of, of when this, of when this occurred. So, um, so yeah, I, I got married this morning. Yeah. Congratulations. And, and, and my, and my, my fiance now wife is, is here. She's, uh, she's been doing a little little TikTok live. Oh, and, cool! And she's uh, and and she's uh, um, she's uh, amazing woman. I, I'm I'm happy to call her my wife, and uh, 
uh, what a special day to do it. So yeah. it's going to be an awesome day all the way around. And I've, I've seen those stories. I don't know if you have seen them also, but that's apparently like a thing. The number of weddings happening, not only today, but there are weddings that are planned for totality where they're saying, I do. I know I, I, you didn't get that opportunity because I'm making you be live with me. I'm sorry for that. Um, but like this, like for those not in the path, this is really a big deal for a lot of people out there as yeah, we continue. It, it is. And when, when you have an opportunity to tie something, a life event around a, an event like this, uh, that, that, you know, people will remember and have, and have pictures of, I think it's a cool opportunity. And, um, you know, it's, my, my wife understands my, my ties to weather and astronomy and how nerdy I can get. Like, <laughs> let, let's do it. Let's, let, let's go do that. So there you go. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I, I don't know where this telescope is from the one thing with this feed is, is it's not giving me live updates as they change positions but that is yet another live picture of totality so it has to be somewhere in mexico because as you can see by the tracker up in the left corner that shadow is now over uh, the, the central part as far as coast to u.s border and we are seeing We're trying to man. we have uh, one cloud that's over us right now that's uh, that's obscuring the sun i just wanted to kind of give you a uh, looking up angle and um, that that's uh, it's it's on. one big chunky cloud but uh, trying but to find the right button for you a little farther south so i think we're, we're still we're still good we're, we're still good all right back to our telescope feed from nasa as another chunk of population is experiencing totality we're, we're highly highly anticipating uh, on the edge of our seats or my seat brian's standing uh, <laughs> it's for it to reach the u.s and <laughs> begin standing. its own trek here It's, it's neat that we have the technology available and the, the collection of telescopes available to track its progress. I mean, um, you look at it, it's, it's moving through Mexico, which you really, you know, we, you know it's uh, not, as, not as heavily populated and um, you know, you've got a lot of gaps in between, but technology-wise, we're still able to get these images as real time as it's taking place. And, uh, you get a 1,700 miles an hour. It's moving quick. So it's going to be in the U.S. here in just a, in just a matter of minutes. Truly. Yeah. It was uh, uh, 1,582 is what my little thing says, miles per hour. 1,500 so. 82. And I think, I think it stretch. I think when it stretches out, I think kind of like the latter parts, and, oh. and it, can, it starts to pick up, gets high at the higher latitudes. It actually speeds up because it's it's not directly on the sphere. It's kind of more of a glance. You know what? As well. you say that, it is increasing. One five eight three now. So yeah, and it's you yeah. said the the peak, the apex is in Mexico. So it actually we'd be coming up on that in the next few minutes. Yes, the, the peak is uh, the peak of that eclipse should be here in uh, just a uh, just a couple of minutes. Matter of fact, I'm going to go back and find find that bit of information that I found earlier so that we can reference that again. Yeah, and I, I'm just leaving the shot up for right now. Tell you what, let's do this. Let's do a little groove. Brian, you look for your thing. I'm going to put the music up, and we can just enjoy the moment. Okay. okay. Nice. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah.
We have been tracking totality across Mexico. Uh, thanks, definitely big thanks to two organizations associated, or excuse me, NASA. Um, Associated Press is also running the NASA live stream, but NASA and their partnership of telescopes, observatories, um, a number of locations that are all pointing their devices and live streaming the sun as totality both comes and goes. And then as well to eclipse2024.org, who was very kind to hook me up with this amazing shadow tracking map that we're seeing in the top left corner there and as you can see in fact i'll bring that one full because this is the the news that i keep waiting for it is approaching the u.s that is the u.s border right there and at 1592 currently miles per hour i mean it's probably a minute away Um, so we are almost to u.s landfall with this and then everyone in the u.s that is waiting to experience this there you go there's that full path and you can be checking in with me as we track its location. Um, let me pop back up to the NASA feed just because it's looking so cool right now. And then I'll bring Brian James back in as it gets ready to make, quote, U.S. landfall. The question that remains on everyone's mind, probably on our, our newer viewers, is what is the weather? What is the cloud cover looking like? Shall I put the weather graphics up, sir? Yes, sir. Bring them on up. All we'll right, here the, we go. Uh, the forecast of what's going on. And you can see that we do. We have a storm system that's across the uh, the northern plains, upper Midwest, uh, across parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Dakotas. And there's lots of clouds. And that's going to, of course, obscure the view of the uh, partial eclipse for the folks that are away from totality. In the path of totality, and if you noticed, you can see behind me. I'm, I'm trying, trying to keep my, my angle up a little bit more. Yep, you yep. can see that the, the sun is starting to peek back out from one of those big, chunky clouds. And um, I don't know if it's actually got the ability to. I could probably throw my throw my eclipse glasses over the camera and see if it picks it up. Oh, it's, it's that should hard to work. See that small. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Let's let's see if it does real sure. quick. We'll sure. see if it. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, I I would say that's working. That, early. that was, but that was really cool. Oh, we just lost Brian. <laughs> Something happened and he logged out. That's what that means when suddenly my face appears in multiple uh, sections there. But that's okay. He'll get logged back in. I'll get him set back up and the show will go on. In the meantime, let's check back in with where that shadow is at because, oh, I heard the ding ding of Zoom. It is crossing into the U.S. right now. Now, Brian, welcome back. Ah, sorry about that. I got a phone call and it knocked me off. Oh, phone uh, call. Best. Yeah, good old phone call. Was it mom right, because so she saw I'm, you on the live stream? I, it could it could have been. It could have <laughs> it could have been. I'm gonna try to get this and get this and see if y'all All right, bringing you back. Are able. Yeah, I I, I think know. and that's your forward facing camera, right? That's my forward facing ca- uh, no, that's my that's my back facing Oh, that camera. is the back my, one. Yeah, that's the back one. I just I just put it over the top, and I mean it's a it's, it's a pretty weak camera, but it's far away. It's the sun, <laughs> so yeah, it's far away. But I could clearly make out that there was like a cutout that was moon shaped. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Yep. That's cool. getting close. Yeah, getting close, getting close. So let's see. Wait. Uh, All right. Shall we hit weather? So no, we already hit weather one more time. Real, let's talk about weather real quick. Yeah, let's All do it right, one more time. Back up. Yep. All right. So. For uh, path, of, path of totality, uh, South Texas, uh, right now as it's coming on, is coming across uh, the U.S.-Mexico border. You can see the, the cloud cover that's across uh, the southern part of Texas. So, unfortunately, the folks across far southwest Texas are going to have quite a bit of cloud cover. As you get a little farther north, Waco toward Dallas. Waco still has some clouds, but uh, around here, DFW, you can see we have at least some breaks. As you head farther north from there across parts of Arkansas and to southeast of Missouri, uh, there are some scattered clouds, but mostly clear skies for, for the, especially uh, the northern half of that path of totality, uh, north and northwest of that blue line. That also includes around Carbondale, Illinois, mm-hmm. southern Illinois, across parts of Indiana, Indianapolis, up towards Dayton, Ohio, and Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland's clearing out nicely. You got Buffalo with uh, some clouds and a few scattered showers, but they're exiting to the east and north. Hopefully we get that back edge of the clouds. It's already approaching Toronto. So that back edge of the clouds hopefully sneaks in right before we get to totality. Uh, Farther to the northeast between Buffalo and Burlington, you're going to have some cloud cover around, but uh, we will still have uh, looks like fairly clear skies. Once you get to the uh, round Burlington over towards parts of Maine, they're going to it's going to be a clear sky as well. 
definitely have uh, have that eerie kind of darkening feeling around, out here in uh, Dallas. And uh, it's it's neat. We got uh, several breaks in the clouds. So for totality, uh, I'll, I'll turn around and show you. So this is looking to the south. This is where the clouds are coming from. And there are several breaks. So we should be able to see totality in its entirety down here in Dallas. Excellent. And we are going to be back with you, Brian, in not even 10 minutes um, to, to see you experience it, whatever that, if you cry, it's okay. I'll tell you that right now. It's totally fine to cry on your first official next star duty live stream thing. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, this is, this is a, this is a good, a good way to, uh, to break the ice and, and get this party started. And, uh, and uh, I couldn't be happier. Thank you for, for asking me to do this. It's yeah. uh, it's an enjoyable time. I even have, my daughter's going to drive down here to experience it because yes! I left I left my solar clips. Sunk, I left. I was supposed to leave her a pair of glasses and I forgot to. So she's just going to come down and watch it here with, well, with, with us. Well, that's so, good. That's, so, it's more communal anyway, right? It's yeah, good to experience we, things like this. We make like it this. a family event. Yeah. We make it a family event. All right. Absolutely. So I'm going to officially let you go. It's your call if you want to stay connected to the Zoom. Certainly leave your IFB on so that I can give you that heads up. Um, but then we'll see back. See you back here in, like I said, about 10 minutes. Excellent. Talk All to right. you soon. Thanks, Brian. And in the meantime, I have got coverage really from uh, border to border, thanks to the Next Star Media Station Group and NASA and the Associated Press. A number of feeds coming in. So we're checking back in here with NASA and its series of partners that have really high-powered telescopes as we're taking another look at what will ab about to be, it's about to be totality once again. I imagine this one is near San Antonio because if you are watching that map in the corner, I'm so happy it's working. Thank you so much, Eclipse2024.org. It is approaching the San Antonio area and it really seems like the, the that cutout of moon over the sun is matching up with the shadow as it gets closer to San Antonio. And then from there, we turn things over because Austin is up next. That means KXAN. Next Star Station there in the capital of Texas. And so we'll do this one more time. I'll do this little music groove, and then uh, we'll witness some totality together, and then we'll turn things over to Next Star Stations. And I will be the glue bringing all of those pieces together. Thank you so much for joining me on this live stream. Um, for those out there that aren't in totality and witnessing it right along with me digitally, I hope you are enjoying it as much as I am. Once again, another shot of Bailey B, Bailey's beads too. And as they adjust, we'll start to see even more of the sun's corona. Okay, as we are approaching the Austin area, this is that moment I've been looking forward to being able to bring you right to the local source. And so we are now going to begin our next star station specific coverage with KXAN and the, the just let the stations and then Brian will get him back. Take it from here.
as long as they're unmuted. To celebrate over the last couple of days here at the Tex Clips Eclipse Festival, we've seen music, dancing, uh, we've had games, we've had calf roping, a Lone Star welcome to the eclipse as it starts its U.S. journey here in Texas, moves all the way through Maine, 15 states, more than 31 million people in line to see totality, but again, there's a lot of concern over the forecast. We're going to keep watching things here. Hopefully, again, it breaks up by this afternoon and we get that good glimpse of history. That's the latest from here in Junction, Texas. I'm Jay Gray. Now back to you. Well, some of the biggest viewing events. So I am, I am looking at this and realizing that this is uh, off by an hour, which is concerning. So I may not be able to bring you KXAN specifically. I'm going to check in with a couple of things. I do have this live camera from Austin, so we can see as it's approaching Austin right now. And let me see if I can fix that KXAN source that I had. Well, we do see it getting dark in Austin, Texas there. Unfortunately, I've, I've discovered that um, my station in Austin did not actually launch their special coverage onto their streaming platform, which is how I was bringing it in. But we are seeing a live picture from Austin. You can see by the shadow tracker that I have up there, it has been transversing that city going across it. So we turn, that is a live picture. It is basically nighttime in the capital of Texas. As uh, coverage continues, let's see what other options I have to bring in. I have a live picture from Tyler, which is, I believe, on the other side of Dallas. That means I'm looking at Waco, and there's a Waco feed I have right here, but it's in commercial. So right now, my plans are not working out exactly as I had hoped. Um, to be perfectly honest with you. But we do know we'll have Brian. And then some of these other stations, I am seeing their special coverage taking place. So my plan will um, come to fruition here in just a few minutes. Fortunately, because this shadow is moving at currently 1,649 miles per hour, it doesn't take long to change locations. Um, watching the shadow tracker, it is departing the Austin area. So the capital will be returning to light and then, Brian, I'm going to need you back on a little earlier than I expected. So I would say in about 30 seconds, I will be bringing you back in, buddy, uh, as we continue this live look at Austin. I'll tell you what, I can also go back to our awesome NASA telescope partner feeds as they are once again um, about to witness, it looks like, going into totality. So we'll have this, and then we'll go to Brian. Stand by, Brian. Okay, Brian, I'm watching this shadow approach, and so I'm going to go ahead and bring you and I back onto the screen here. Have you noticed a difference? Is it getting darker at all? Absolutely. Absolutely. The uh, it's You can feel it getting darker. This is such 
an incredible experience. <laughs> 140 and 43 seconds is when totality starts okay. here in Dallas. We're going to be in totality for three minutes and 51 seconds. So we have a nice long bit of time. This is so Hey, weird do me a favor. You can, see the can you change it to horizontal and then I'll make you full screen? Okay, let's see. You, if I... you just turn it, will it auto rotate? Let's. Will it auto rotate? Let's see. Yes, perfect. Does it? That's it. All right, Brian, you're up full for okay. this entire next four minutes or so. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we are experiencing totality. This. Uh, and okay, so we're not quite there. We're not quite there. Don't look at the sun yet. A little, a, <laughs> a little sliver. We're not. We're not quite there yet. We've got uh, just a little hint of a sliver on the on the far top part of the sun, and uh, so it's going to be close to that diamond ring. I got to put my hand someplace else so you can actually see the camera and not, <laughs> and not my thumb. Okay, that's a that's a little bit better. Yeah. Okay, so honestly, it this. looks like it's getting darker from here, like on there your camera. Oh my goodness. Holy. This is incredible. Whoa. Yeah. This is different. Oh my God. It looks like it a quick like sunset. It, it does. It looks like it is. It is sunset. Oh, look at that. Okay. Let's see if I could. It's, it's, there's a little bit of a little bit of a cloud in front of it right now. Look at the Ooh, star no, I see to it. the lower right. Yeah. Of the look the star, look at that! Oh my goodness, that is so incredible! Wow, this is just amazing. It does. It it looks it looks like probably about maybe forty five minutes after sunset is is, <laughs> is what it looks like. It is it is amazing. I'm trying to see if some of the clouds are actually starting to uh, to obscure a little bit because. They're going away there. It's starting to come out from behind some of those clouds. That's just a, just a little bit. It's honestly, it's it's incredible. And you're just using a yeah, cell phone to show us. I'm this. using a cell phone, and, I, and not only that, I'm using my 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 front or my my back facing cell phone, which is or cell phone camera, which is even worse than the the front facing one. Uh. But that's that is so incredible. That uh, wow. Are you? Oh my. Goodness. Okay, I lost. There you go. I put it back in the frame a little bit more. <laughs> it's okay. I don't want you to lose it's, the experience just because of this. This is. Oh my God. Wow. Just, and you kind of look. I can, I can see a little bit. I'm looking a little bit farther back toward the west. I can see the sky is lightning, lightning a little bit. Uh -huh. um, so it's, it, you kind of get that little hit. Oh, I can see the flare. Look at the, the there's a, there it go. There it goes. Uh, there's a, you can see one of the the like kind of pinkish flares on the bottom of the sun. That's unbelievable. What a unique experience. I see. I can see two stars just kind of in my field of view right now. I see a jet going by. This is uh, for those of you in totality a little bit farther upstream. Get ready. It's it's an awesome experience. This is. This is so cool. This is definitely one of those once in a lifetime type moments that uh, you will probably serve as a core memory. Now you think about the movie, the the, the movie Inside Out, where the core yeah, <laughs> memories yeah, are made. Yeah. That's, that, that's what you think about. You think about stuff like that. Yeah. Never mind the so, whole marriage thing this morning. Totality. Yeah. So I've got I've got my daughter and my next door neighbor and, her, and Ed and my, and my daughter Olivia and I've got my, my wife Lindsay. She's she's over there recording as well. Oh, so this is we great. Are, we are experiencing this. Just so cool. Wow. And it, the, the clouds, the clouds broke free perfectly. There, there's another, you know, fairly big cloud that's coming in. Yeah. But I think we'll be out of totality by the time, by the time that happens. Um, well, okay. So one, two, three, I see four stars. This is so cool. That is it's so the middle cool. of the day and I'm counting the number of stars in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, by the shadow God, tracker, feel... you are almost out of it. I can feel that it got cooler as well. The, the temperature, the temperature dropped about about four or five degrees. It feels like about five, about a five degree drop. 
it, it I can feel it's a little bit cooler. Okay, <laughs> Diamond Ring is coming back now on the on the outside edge. So glasses back on when that diamond ring starts to appear. And there it comes. Wow, look at this. Look at look at it coming back out. This is this is so neat as it comes back to life. This is unbelievable. Chip, you gotta get the next one. <laughs> I'm only like two you hours from it one. right now. If I left, I'd miss it entirely and be stuck in traffic. <laughs> yeah, I'd miss it entirely. You would you still wouldn't get there in time. No. Oh, this is so cool. It looked like someone had like one of those uh, uh, dimmer switches as it was coming yes. back and they were just yeah. slowly turning yeah. the sun back on. Yeah, it, that's that, that's a good way to describe it. I'm a, I'll go back vertical now and uh, that way you kind of get a better, a better look as it starts to lighten back up here across DFW. Ladies and gentlemen, we have experienced totality in its entirety. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so I'm looking at the different stations that I have available to me. The the couple of them that I was depending on to be next uh, are not also not properly live streaming as I had hoped. So my next um, next star station that is live K A R K in Little Rock. So let me go ahead and bring that big map back up, and we'll see where the Umbra is at at the moment. So it is uh, crossing into Arkansas right now. In fact. Uh, left DFW, that, it's going through Texarkana on its way towards, towards Little Rock. Yep. So I think it's an okay time for me to go ahead and switch my coverage then over to KARK based out of Little Rock and see how they will experience totality. Brian, like I said, um, we'll be back with you at the very end. So just absorb that. Be in the moment with your family. Thanks you again for sharing it with us here on this live you stream. You bet. You bet. We'll talk to you in a little bit. All right. Sounds good. Okay, K T A L, or excuse me, K A R K. I was looking at K T A L, but they are on, and the eclipse is approaching them totality. So we're going to turn our coverage over to the next star station, based out of Little Rock, Arkansas. And we are just about uh, five minutes away from totality right now. We're going to show you what exactly it looks like because it's up on the big screen here at the football stadium. Look how gorgeous that is, you guys. We are so close and things have almost gotten a little bit silent as people are anticipating the big total solar eclipse in just a few minutes. Interesting looking at the, the video or looking at this live shot yes. because you, it really doesn't tell the true story no. of what people are seeing out there. In fact, your partner, Kevin Kelly, just came in and he said it's kind of weird because there's kind of an orange hue out right. there and it's you can just kind of tell something's but something's different. We're not seeing that in our live shots. So, um, but that's okay. We want to go to Gary Burton Jr. Yeah. Now he's up in Searcy right now with a, an event there that is a Star Wars theme, which mm -hmm. is apropos without a doubt. Pretty good size, Gary. A very good crowd. As you guys said, you're not seeing what's happening out here. This is my first eclipse and this is it's very, very cool. Taking a look. I mean, there is just a sliver of the sun that hasn't been covered up yet by the moon. We're about four minutes, as you can see from the, the countdown, four minutes and 50 seconds. Just take a look at some of the people here that are uh, all attention is facing upward towards the skies as they are looking at this partial totality right now. Totality here in Searcy is 153, and we are approaching that as the clock continues to wind down. My my camera lady Alexis, she's panning around just 
Take a look at the people. I mean, they are really just soaking this in. Like I said, all the attention is facing upward to the skies as this is uh, just a once in a lifetime event. This is just very, very, very cool. I, I didn't, I'll be honest, I didn't really feel like I would be that impressed by it, but my goodness, this is, uh, this is very, a very sight to see, and it's getting darker as we speak. Very, very cool. I'm Gary Burton Jr., live in Searcy. Back to you guys. Gary, first-hand account right there. All right, Gary, we appreciate that, but we do want to take you to Hot Springs where Madison Gaffner is standing by. She has been in the thick of things at Oaklawn, and I believe totality has reached Hot Springs. The crowd right there Look experiencing at totality there in we Hot go. Springs. There we go. That's Madison, right. tell us about it. That's right, we just hit the total solar eclipse. You can hear people cheering. It was so quiet with anticipation right before this moment. Now it is getting darker and darker. People are looking up to the sky to watch. It's lasting here about three minutes and 37 seconds. Let's look at this crowd. I mean, the phones are going up to the sky. People are out here with cameras and telescopes to capture this wonderful moment. This is beautiful. I mean, just amazing. Right now, all you can see are diamonds around that are happening all over in the sky. This is my first total solar eclipse, like many of those that are here today at Oakland. And I mean, it couldn't be a better place and with better people to share this moment with people from Atlanta, Georgia, North Carolina, Nebraska, Virginia, young and old coming out to watch this historic event. Now, maximum totality for us here in Hot Springs is at 151 and the end of the partial totality is at 310. So some people are even out here videoing. They've been out here capturing these moments all day. I got to look through a telescope earlier and wow, it was just beautiful. I'm looking up right now and you can see we were able to take the sunglasses off and it is just shining bright around the sun and the moon. It is gorgeous. If you have time to step outside right now, I would do so. Now the horses do have the day off because the races were ended this last weekend and now they're in the comfort of their own stall. I'm Madison Gaffner reporting live here in Hot Springs, Arkansas at the Oakland Racing and Casino. Now back to the studio. Well, Donna, that live shot certainly picking up just exactly that what's picked happening it up. out You know there. what, Bob? It, it, it's touching me now. I'm really getting emotional. You know, it's 151 it's, yep. in Little Rock. Total eclipse is happening now. We want to go back to Joel and Samantha. They are in the River Market Amphitheater area, and we want to know what folks there are. Are they cheering? Well, these two are. It's incredible. Yeah. We hear you guys. Yes, we hear you guys. We are out here right now. It is getting dark. Look, it is getting look, okay. We see look, it right look, now. Gosh. Don't be, look at that. Hopefully, you guys can see this. Oh my gosh! We are going into totality <laughs> right now. You can see the Bailey it's beads so cool. there off on the side. You see there's a bright spot on the very bottom of the moon. That is where the light is shining through the valleys of the mountains <laughs> on the moon, y'all. We can perceive terrain here on Earth. <laughs> this is incredible. This is amazing. It is, I have chills. To, yeah, <laughs> but we do have some high thin clouds and we're starting to see the corona now shining around the edges. I'll be, this is. I mean, it's literally yeah, dark outside stars. too. If you guys cannot, if you guys cannot tell, it is dark, it is cold. And what you're pointing out, every, everything that you're pointing out is just incredible to see in person. It is amazing. It is absolutely <laughs> amazing. Totality. In Little Rock. Wow. This is what we've been waiting for. We've mm -hmm. been waiting to see this, and now you see it as well as all of those people who are in the River Market Amphitheater watching it, seeing it in action. We have waited so long for this moment. And the reaction from both Joel and Samantha, you can oh, tell wow. that it's just kind of a, you know, one of those things that catches you a little off guard if you haven't seen it before Joel has. Now here's Samantha. here's a live look. Is this Conway? I need to double check with our producers because we were told we were going to. This is this is us right here. This is downtown Little Rock. This is another view of what everyone mm -hmm. is seeing as we speak, Bob. Total eclipse of the sun. There it is. I mean, this is one of those things. And I think the next one is in. 
It's in 21 years from now. So. And I can tell you this because Kevin and I were talking about our 20th year anniversary on Fox 16. So we gotta, gotta wait gotta another 20 years. Yeah, yes. Do it all over again. <laughs> exactly. My gosh. This is so wonderful to see. Even though we're right here in the studio, Bob, I still feel what so many people out there are feeling at this moment. Just to look at that image. I mean, this is one of those things that the moon, you know, our celestial friend forever, you know, has just parked itself in front of the sun, blotting out mm -hmm. what keeps this planet alive. And here Thank you're looking at people in Circe. They, uh, you can see all eyes up to the sky mm -hmm. as people watch this show, this beautiful, beautiful show of Mother Nature and the gods and all that put this together. And it's one of those things, everybody is experiencing this mm -hmm. at the same exact time. Mm -hmm. Emotions are completely different. They're probably as varied as the folks who are there, but mm -hmm. it's something that everyone's gonna, everyone will have a t-shirt. I tell Eclipse, you what. Eclipse, Arkansas, 2024 from Mexico to Maine, and it's making it stop right now in the state of Arkansas. This is hot springs that you're looking at here. All of these are live videos that we're showing you of what's going on, children playing. I can remember when I was a kid. I remember. And I saw an uh, eclipse yeah. and my mom and my dad, we were in the backyard. And as you're also seeing the eclipse leaving, totality starting to depart <clears throat> the Little Rock area, Arkansas. Um, we're going to continue our coverage, though, connecting those next star stations that are in the path of totality. Now, WGN TV based in Chicago, not actually in the path of totality. However, they have sent uh, a couple of people all across the country, namely Tom Skilling visiting the airwaves once again out of retirement. So he's in Southern Illinois. They have Demetrius Ivory, the, the Replacement, you can't replace Tom Skilling, but the successor for Chief Meteorologist, he is in Ohio. Um, we've got live pictures there from Chicago. So I'm going now move this live stream coverage over to them and we will get to witness totality once again through the eyes of Tom Skilling and those around him in Southern Illinois. For those watching the map, in fact, I'll bring that up quick just to bring it back so you can see exactly where it's at right now. It's crossing into Missouri and approaching Southern Illinois there. Um, Carbondale, I believe, is where Tom is. He, that's where he was seven years ago at this point. So I, I think he would return to that same spot. So let me go ahead and turn things over to WGN TV based in Chicago, but covering from the Midwest as a whole. Approaching that 207 mark, and it has gotten a little bit cooler out here on the lakefront and a little bit darker. It's amazing how much light there still is, given that about 70% of the sun is covered. You can see this crowd here at the Adler Planetarium. The excitement is palpable here. Many people uh, waiting with anticipation to look up in, uh, in a few minutes uh, to see the sun. Um, but as I don't know if you can tell, but it's certainly a little bit darker than it was the last time you came to us, and uh, you can kind of see that uh, the sun is not as bright glistening off of the lake behind us. Um, it's almost like a, a partial shadow is over us right now. Uh, again, we're waiting uh, until 2.07. That's when we'll have 94% of the sun blocked out by the moon here in Chicago. Uh, so that's kind of what we're all waiting for and the excitement is real uh, as we do feel the temperatures dropping and uh, things starting to get a little weird out here. <laughs> Back to you in the studio. All right, thank you, Mike. It was even darker where Tom Skilling is, a little further south as they wait. We're just about 10 minutes away from totality there. Lots of people looking to the sky. Everyone got the message, which was great. They do have their glasses on, even the little ones, which has been For wonderful. Sure. When they take them off, they put them back on to look up to the sun. There is Tom and his friend Turtle there. Yeah, <laughs> and a whole a bunch of other folks there from uh, WGN as well. And I was wondering, you know, for toddlers, that must be a challenge, right? To be able to keep the glasses on the toddlers. Absolutely. Right? right? You just keep hammering the message yeah. home. You know that as a parent. But what a unique experience because they then will be able to be perhaps involved in another eclipse. The next eclipse is March of 2033. It'll only be seen in northwestern Alaska. August of 2044, it'll be North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana. 2045, also in August. That'll be all across the southern U.S. from California to Florida. But really, this is a unique opportunity for us. We did it in 2017 and again this year to be in southern Illinois. And I think uh, Tom had said the next one is something like 90 years away where we will enjoy or see totality. So, uh, you know, 
relish the moment while you can, certainly. And I like, as we have been uh, talking to you throughout our special coverage here, uh, the different people from different walks of life and different areas are kind of What's just it? coming together out of their thrill and their joy and fascination with this solar eclipse. It, uh, it's so nice to see that, you know, people are coming together just to enjoy each other's company and, uh, you know, the common denominator around the celestial oh phenomenon. Here We're we one go. minute away from totality down where Tom Skilling is. We're enjoying the four people life. Are they coming to us, guys? Yes, Why don't we do Tom, that, Tom? We can hear you now, yeah, Tom. We got you loud and clear. Oh. What's happening? Guys, I, I'm... It, this is amazing. You can see the darkness now. You know, I'm here with my friend Turtle. We cried on each other's show. We started, we'll show our age now. We started singing Leslie Gore's It's My Party and I'll Cry If I Want right. To. Watch cry, this, guys. Can. Here it goes. Here it goes. This, we're Here going goes. from day to night. Look at this. Whoa. <laughs> oh, Tom, it's almost there. Oh, my word. Oh, big Oh, my oh, word. Here we go. I'll tell you. There. Look at this. Oh, here we are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we did it! <laughs> Round two! Yeah, that's right! And look at it, it's beautiful! Look at the beauty! Oh, look, oh my God! Oh, look, yes. look, at, look at Jupiter oh. to the right of the disk of the sun. Look, it's come out. Look, and look at the horizon. Oh Turtle, God. look at this. It's, it's like 360 degrees Talk around us. It, it is, is dark. Beautiful. And uh, look, what's this? Oh, oh, and now we're going to look through the telescope right here. Come here, watch your. And, right here. All right, okay, let's right see. Here, right here. All right, all right. Turtle, are you around? I'm here, I'm here. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. Oh, look at the solar prominence. Oh, my God. There's a solar flare up there, guys. Oh, it's it's, okay. uh, it's coming no, out. No, please. Yeah, look through. Look, oh, look. Do you know, we, we talked about this. Oh, my word. The NASA astronomers have, look, have got to be ecstatic about this. You know, we pointed out one of the differences uh, come look at between this, this like solar really eclipse cool. and the last one. It's the sun is more active. Oh and so uh, the chance of seeing a solar flare was something that scientists that? talked about. Yes, come here, Bert. And it's actually oh, happening. Oh. And the bright star that folks in the path of totality are seeing, it looks like a star. It's a planet. It's Jupiter, about 30 degrees to the right of the disk of the sun. Now we can look up at the corona. And uh, tell me again, CJ. Uh, Jupiter is right there, and then Venus is below it on the... Oh, so that is Venus to the right. Venus to the right, Jupiter up there. You did it. Oh, my goodness. I'm like, <laughs> this, well, isn't this something? Folks, it's the middle of the afternoon, and it's like it looks uh, about 10 o'clock at night. Yep. Uh, it, it's just stunning. And um, the whole horizon is illuminated. I mean, can you imagine in the early years of our... Uh, of humans on this planet, what you must have thought, Turtle, when you saw this Tom, happening. A solar flare on the top of the sun. Look at that flare bubbling up on the top. This is amazing, guys. Oh yeah, it's stunning. Can we? I wonder if that shows up on our uh, oh, our up. camera shot. Maybe Eric can punch up the uh, wow. the full di the full disc oh, covered gosh. by the sun. If and if you look at the upper right at about two o'clock on the clock, oh, uh, there's a solar flare showing up. And this is something the uh, NASA scientists were excited by. We didn't see it in 2017 because they'll use this moment of totality to study the corona, which is the atmosphere of the sun. And there's a lot to be uh, said about that. You know, I look around here. People are hugging one another. You've got families here together. There are children who have never seen a solar eclipse before, and they're here with mom and dad and brother and sister, and they're they're hugging each other. It is a com it's a communal moment uh, among all of us at this incredible little grassy lake campsite near Carbon, Illinois, and it is like nighttime. And we've done this in five minutes' time. Stunning. Now, the next thing you'll see is when the disk of the moon starts clearing the sun, there'll be something called a, uh, a, a, a diamond ring, which is the explosion of color as the sun reemerges. And at that point, you don't want to be looking at the sun anymore because you can damage your retina in seconds. You ought to see. You ought to see. Stevie, you're getting the folks here uh, at the telescope. 
everybody's taking in this uh, solar flare, which is showing up. And believe me, it's not every solar eclipse you see a flare. That's one of these prominences that comes out of the surface of the sun, and that's what sends the rays, the, the plasma, the charged particles toward Earth that ignites the northern lights when it's Earth-directed. Uh, this apparently isn't. But look at, the, look at the lake. There are people out of the lake taking this in from this site. And look at the hugging. People are hugging. Uh, it's just, it's amazing. This will be uh, the lifetime, uh, an experience of a lifetime. Hey, we can uh, see it! Oh my God, oh, here it comes. Uh, so the sun is reappearing again. There it is! Uh, it's the there. What are you saying, Turtle? I saw the sun. <laughs> All right, there you go. Coverage from WGN TV in Southern Illinois, but uh, the eclipse is continuing. The totality keeps moving, so let's move quickly. <coughs> w E H T in Evansville, Indiana, experiencing it right now. So we're seeing a live picture coming from our station there in Evansville, and <coughs> it is quickly approaching. <coughs> excuse me, I got a little something in my throat, and it's not the eclipse that's doing it. It's a little something. But quickly approaching Indianapolis, which I really want to get to because in Indianapolis, not only is there a huge event at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, uh, but NASA and CNN and like there's just massive coverage happening there. So we're going to go to our own station, WXIN Fox 59, who is there. And you can see it, it's getting dark. They are about to be in totality. So let us witness once again as another location enters totality. What do you think? We got about 30 oh seconds. God. What do we think? This is unreal. This is unreal. I, I just can't even believe it. There, I've never seen anything like it. Imagine. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, my gosh. It's going. <laughs> okay, we can look up, right? Oh, my gosh. You can look gosh. up. Right? You can look no, now? Yeah, no glasses right now. You can look up Yes. Now. Everybody's like, can, what can wow. you do? Everybody has their cell phones out. They're all taking pictures. We are enjoying it here. Plan it off to the, to the, to the uh, right, bottom right. You can fully see one planet. Yes, I was like, clear as day. That's a planet, right? Wow. Wow. And we're going to be like this for the next four, four minutes. minutes. Three, yeah. 45 now or whatever. That's wild. That is. Is okay, talk about the temperature change. I just got a little bit of goosebumps because you can feel I've that it's the about. I got goosebumps, and I don't know if it's because of the temperatures <laughs> or just the. We can turn back the around. The amount that we're that we're into right oh, now. Oh yeah, let's look at the airplane yeah. that's going right there in between that planet, and then also see. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, right okay, now we, we want to go live to IMS. IMS to see what's happening there. Wow. Take it away, you guys. Oh. Oh my. I goodness. mean, this is unbelievable. Here it is! Totality! Uh, wow! IMS. This is like nothing I have ever experienced in my life. Truly unbelievable. I know I heard uh, oh, Max wow. talking about it, but there's something so <laughs> moving about <laughs> this. I can't believe this. Take them off. You can take them off. Yeah, you Here can we are. My word. Wow. People are jumping up and down. Oh my, my God. I can see my kids jumping Isn't up and gorgeous? down. Wow. This is like nothing I've ever experience in my life. Nope, there's oh my a planet physical here. I believe that's Venus. There's Venus, just. We have another planet available the there. Oh. Right prior to the eclipse, you had a oh little halo rainbow that showed up. That was the light refracting through the cirrus clouds. And oh. now we've had a good seven or 11 degree temperature drop. Wow. Look at the sky on the horizon. It's almost like it's sunrise here it on does. race day. Can I give keep you a it, hug? Keep, <laughs> keep in mind, oh, it is 3 Can you believe we're experiencing this together? Now it's we are in totality officially. officially. Although wow. I think we've been there for a few seconds. Yeah, we've got three minutes and 50 seconds Oh, total. my goodness. Wow. I think this uh, just reminds just you of the wonder of the world, right? Wasn't it? Just right before this, to see this crowd all united as yes. one. We have 33 countries here at IMS and a silence all between uh, all of us in that moment. Fireworks. I love it. <laughs> and we've been able to see kids who are just in this wonderment, this moment, uh, adults who I, all feel like big kids. We're, we're like, wait, what's going on? I can't believe this. So in the middle of the day to have this kind of moment, I mean, oh my God. We, we knew this would be are, incredible, you know, but. The, the science of behind it is so much fun. It's so precise. But from yeah. a meteorology standpoint, to get these clouds to thin, to be able to see it the way we're seeing it, to feel the temperature drop of as much as 12, 13, 14 degrees, and 
after this is just about done and it's almost completed, there may be a gust of wind, and in oh, some wow. occasions it might even pop a thunder shower. Well, let's let's hope atmosphere. not for that. The, I know it won't be here on top of. As I say, the hairspray isn't that yeah. strong. Yeah. Was this everything it was expected <laughs> to be? Even Honestly, more. it's beyond. I, even it's more. so mesmerizing. Yeah. Everyone said this would be a fantastic moment, and I just don't think you can describe it no, until I mean, you've you, seen you, it in you person. Have to, you have to uh, take it all in. It, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It There's truly people is. people that have come all the way over from 2017. And listen to this crowd. Oh, My this goodness. This crowd is so crowd amped up. It cheering we you can can't have our blame them off for a few moments to, yeah. to watch this i hope that they're showing moment. this full screen and not us <laughs> <laughs> our faces are beyond we're, we're not yeah. this is this is the moment here to oh. see the total solar eclipse and to be here yeah it's a, and, and folks are watching in their backyards and to see this i think what's probably most uh, captivating is how dark the skies became yeah. How, yeah. how it really dimmed the sun and it happened all so quickly well of course we've been tracking all of this for you across central indiana so right yeah. now let's send it out to fishers in Croner prairie where they too yes, are seeing this moment of totality. Isn't this beautiful? You guys, we are in totality here in Fishers, and we've got fireworks going off here. The crowd is just erupted into applause, and everyone right now is just, you can see right here, it's having a panel across the crowd. Phones are out, people are smiling. I've seen a couple people with tears here. This is just absolutely incredible. Yeah, kids are dancing. It's a huge experience here. You know what? I can say, I wouldn't be able to tell you if the birds went silent because the crowd came alive here. <laughs> Well, it's a good time to move out of Indiana and into Ohio, where Totality has also entered Dayton. It just so happens we have WDTN right there, and we can witness another local station and crowd experience Totality. Um, let me put them up full here. Around you too, because of course you want to you want to remember this one, but you also want to remember the people that you're with that you're going to be able to keep it with. Yeah, we're going to go to uh, Sartaj Singh. He's in Wapakoneta for us. How's it looking out there, Sartaj? certainly feels like it with the eclipse. Now we just watched it. You can hear everyone cheering around me about seeing the total eclipse. And honestly, I had my glasses on and I have to say, it was a very amazing experience. Now, gonna go ahead and look around me right here and pretty much everyone is just looking up into the sky in unison. All this really looks like a community event, you know, no matter where you're from, what state, what country, Everyone's here just to look up at the eclipse, and I think that's really special. That is very, very special. And, once and it again, continues to move. I'm going to continue to move up uh, next. We are going to our yeah. station yeah. in Columbus, Ohio, WCMH, where totality is descending as I speak. Oh. Well, we'll get there in just a second, but here, here's what I was thinking, Colleen. How many people who, you know, were going, ah, this isn't my thing, I'm not too big on science, but I, I had to stop and I paused and I thought, how many people throughout the country are pausing, paying attention to this? A and universal we're, and we're, moment. And we're all united yep. uh, under, under one event. And it I think is that's a universal cool. moment. Look at that, just a sliver of the sun left. And we're going to remind you, we have a special filter on mm -hmm. this camera. You cannot just turn your camera yeah, not a good toward idea. this because it will ruin your lens. Here we go. Oh, look at that. So this is the NBC4 Eclipse camera. In and, Morrow County. In Morrow County, yeah. And so you can see it. Oh, oh goodness. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Inching over. Almost totality. It, it really is remarkable to watch it go over and realize it's going to be total darkness. You know, uh, 30 seconds to totality. Isn't it amazing how and we can we'll do a watch countdown it to this? Move over. Yeah, and exactly. And we've been counting down for, <laughs> for months now, but here we are. <laughs> Our countdown is, is going to finish in... I'm going to keep bouncing around because we've got another station in Ohio in Cleveland, and they have got a group outside, so you're actually witnessing it get darker. So this is a whole different look than what we were just going at, but here we are, totality descending on Cleveland, Ohio. Wow! Okay, uh, Chris, put, put your glasses on. There it us, is. Look at that, Chris. Wow! what you are seeing here. It is now 312, and you could just see a little sliver, and now we want to look for the beat, right? Yeah, so we are still in, in yeah, the very last sliver here. Uh, it's it, this, this part goes really really fast and we're going to get to totality so the excitement builds up uh you know even with the headset on i can hear the audience starting to hoot and holler
Miller. Yes. People cheering. Uh, it, the temperature has significantly dropped. Uh, I'm already feeling that. So uh, there's so many things going on all at the same time. Uh, and, and just even being able to see, like, images, the shadows are sharper, the, the cutouts around people and things are all sharper right around us. Uh, so it's a really eerie phenomenon and it's so cool and we are, we are, we are in the last little bits here. Um, you'll get to see them coming up very, very soon. We are so grateful to have Chris here with us today, not only because he knows everything there is to know about the eclipse, he's with NASA Glenn but he's seen it once before in 2017, and it was the, the event of a lifetime for you, wasn't it? Oh, it was. 2017 was phenomenal. We were out in the middle of Jefferson City, Missouri in August. <gasps> here we oh, go, Chris. Oh, here we go. Oh, my gosh. Years. So it is getting is really, that, really close. Is that the diamond? So we're getting even just a little bit more here. Just a little bit. And we're seeing bit. those oh little gosh. edges starting wow. to shine out. Look at that. <gasps> and we get the, the last little glimmer here. And oh man, everybody is screaming out uh -huh. behind us. It, it is, is so absolutely dark. phenomenal. I am loving Chris <laughs> hearing all these people, thousands and thousands and now, of people, witnessing something they've never seen before right. and will never see again. Here it is. We're on the countdown now, the final countdown. It, Woo! Oh, this is so incredible. All right. And so to think this is only get, it's only going to last like four minutes, right? Yes, yeah, three minutes and 50 seconds. So we are in now. We can take off. Oh, my gosh. Look at the atmosphere. Oh, my gosh. You can see it glowing across. Look at that <laughs> ring. It is absolutely phenomenal. You can see the atmosphere of the sun <gasps> shining across. I can see we have planets that are actually shining a little bit down and to the right here. Uh, so we've, we've got several planets, but that one I, I believe is Venus that I can see there. Um, so, and if you can see, oh look, the, 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 I mean, everything, look around you. We have a sunset all around us, no matter which way you look. We have 360 degree sunset and we have this amazing totality experience. Oh my gosh, it, it, every, <laughs> it never gets old. And Chris, this is the time. These are those very few minutes where we could take our glasses off and look at this. This is totality, what yes. we're looking at right now. Yes, this is totality. It is, and it, oh my God. <laughs> Is, uh, the street lights, have, the street right lights have come on over on uh, Route 2, so uh, they think mm. that it's nighttime. Uh, yep, and you can take those glasses off. You have to. You can't see anything in totality with the glasses on. I tell you what, Chris, I wasn't sure exactly what to expect today. We've been reporting on this for so many months now, and I just did not know. There's a live picture from Putin Bay right now. I didn't know how I would react, but I'm feeling just the way everybody else here is reacting. I just want to let out a roar, a cheer. This is something I'll never, ever see again. It's just a beautiful, beautiful oh, thing. Looking at the edge, you can it? actually see prominences off the sun. I can see uh, oh, little yes. ejecta oh. off the chromosphere the chromosphere uh, that is the thinnest part of the atmosphere right on the, against the edge of the surface of the the disk of the sun you can see little bursts out there uh, I can even see some of it from the naked eye if I look down into the left side and it's still safe you can see the color coming off of that that's why it's called the chromosphere oh, uh, wow. you can actually see that is a solar prominence that is ejecta from the atmosphere of the sun so after Woo! out of Cleveland, where does it where does it go? Well, we're going heading up toward Erie and toward Rochester and Niagara Falls uh, in New York, but we are down to the last one minute and 20 seconds. So, oh, yeah, you want to make sure you take out the last in, you take everything in, be able to see it. I think I'm seeing another planet here coming along the same line. I see it. Yes, Chris is do. pointing up. Yep. When you pointed up, I wasn't sure I'd see anything. Yep, yep. I can see it right now, too. Absolutely. So, so here we are. We're in the middle of the afternoon. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The sun is right in front of us and we can see planets in the quote-unquote nighttime sky. And just a few moments ago, we saw a live look from downtown Cleveland, and as you said, all the lights are on. I mean, it looks like it's midnight out here. Right, it's 50 seconds left, so take it in. This is your last chance to get your last minute in uh, of enjoying this uh, amazing celestial phenomenon. I'll tell you this, too. Tracy and I get asked all the time, what's the most fun thing you've ever covered, the most meaningful thing you've ever covered? And up until now, we would agree it was, you know, the Indians back in 2016, the convention, whatever. Right now, this is it. 
Chris, and nothing could ever compare to this. This is just unbelievable. You see it once, you're sold yes. for the rest of your life. It is it is such an opportunity, and you'll start looking for the next one, that's for sure. Oh, that's, uh, and, and again, that red dot that you see there at the bottom, what is that again? So that is the chromosphere. So oh, you can actually see some solar ejecta, some, some coronal mass ejections uh, uh, that are actually kind of coming off. They happen oh, all the time. Oh, we've got diamond oh. ring. Whoa, diamond, diamond rings. Here Tell us go. about diamond on. rings, okay, Chris. So Means yeah. You gotta get those eyes back. Get those. Uh, oh, get your glasses, get glasses back on, back Trace. On. Okay. Yep. Gosh. That was it. There we go. We're coming back in. We get those Bailey's beads. Woohoo! Now, while you get a chance, it's commemorated as well, and we'll send it back to you in the studio. But really, just a sight to be seen out here in the city of Dunkirk. All right, Patrick. Thanks very much. Uh, you cannot see us, ladies and gentlemen. Watching us at home, but Jordan Looks and like I we just reached totality. I think we reached totality. We're here we are cheering outside here outside right now, and we cannot. We are able to take your glasses off, Jor. You can see now we are in the moment of totality. Oh, this is just an absolutely amazing sight. You can see the corona around the sun. We see some fireworks going off in the distance. We are at our moment of totality here in North Buffalo. Now let's send it over to News Force Kelsey Anderson. Kelsey, how is totality looking in the Cataract City? Oh my goodness. Okay, so first of all, we turned our lights off because we don't want to ruin this experience for anyone else here in Niagara Falls. I'm going to move out of the way. My photographer will zoom in on some of the crowds, but again, it's really dark here. Look at all of the lights shining across over in Canada. Thousands of people are witnessing this here in Niagara Falls, New York, and on the other side in Canada. Unfortunately, we cannot see the sun right now. It is completely covered by clouds, but it's dark in the middle of the day. Now this just happened. So we have another probably two, one and a half minutes of this total darkness. A lot of people disappointed that the clouds were going to totally ruin this experience for them earlier. But I would say this is an amazing experience. Can you hear? Can you hear that crowd? Screaming now as we are getting a glimpse of the sun. Okay, it peeped through a little bit there through the clouds, but now it just went back behind the clouds. Again, still very dark, so we're still very excited here in Niagara Falls. I talked to a lot of people from across the Northeast who came to witness this and they said, no better place to witness something like this than in front of this beauty of Niagara Falls. All right, I'll send it back to you guys. Dave and Jordan. Really cool that our local station in Buffalo can be there at Niagara Falls. Sorry, my mic was muted the last time I popped on. I'm going to move now to our next station located in Syracuse, New York, because they are about to enter totality as well. And what's interesting for me, just very quickly editorialize, is Brian James and I talked about the cloud cover in this area and how they weren't going to have as good of a view. But I'll tell you what, it is definitely darker oh, oh, looking in this out area over the lake than it was is amazing to look at okay, right now, now because WSYR, it is almost our station up in like Syracuse, nighttime. New York. It, it, I mean, it's it's very sudden. It's not, and I'm, it, we just saw lights yep. turn on automatically. Yep. Uh, yep. So we are now, if we're not uh, in totality, there, there we, we are pretty darn close. 321 on my so, uh, phone clock right now. Yep. And, and it, it is, Jim, how quickly, I am yes. amazed at how quickly now the light is disappearing. Yeah. Um, it is pretty close to full darkness outside right now and just about 30 seconds ago 45 seconds we are now in almost complete darkness right yep. now now here over to go. our southeast and also to our north look at to the north oh, wow there's still light on the edge of the screen and uh you know that's there it is. you know the the shadow is only about 110 miles wide and so you're seeing light on either side of the shadow as it's passing over us right now. Amazing to see, I mean, just how quickly the light disappeared. I mean, it is about as dark out as you would get at 8.30, 9 o'clock now. 
uh, probably yeah, closer to yeah. 8:30. Okay. So it's it's kind of like light late twilight there's a picture of nbt bank stadium right now now what do you think we're seeing there jims because i see a little bit of light in that I, shot with the darkness is that kind I of what we're not, seeing on either side of us where we're seeing it may have been oh someone's got some fireworks going on in the oh, background wow. there oh, wow there okay, we go let's take a look at nbt where it's completely pitch black there it is then that's you're in totality there yeah now and okay now we see the lights in the so concourse there, there and now what am i seeing that kind of up behind there that may be you know the edge of the shadow because okay. again in syracuse they're only in it for a minute 23 right. while up here we're in it for three minutes oh jim i can see oh yes yeah, something yes here. It's oh just enough of an outline that we are seeing it and, I mean, and it, it gets a round of applause and the clouds are enough that we actually don't really need our glasses no. but you can still no, we're see in totality so what are we looking at there we see it fully covering like fully up, covering the sun. and there's probably a little bit of the corona yes there's a little bit of the corona that you can see and i don't know if they can get that shot set up oh because it was just so close Wow, but we, we did, and I and, and I honestly didn't think that I would see the Corona today, so that's a bonus. That's a bonus right there. And I'm thinking we got a little little bit more where we can uh, get across okay. and uh, still see of some of this because we are in totality here, Jim, for about three minutes and three twenty three 20, seconds. Three twenty three. So we're probably only about a minute in. And, and again, there comes again, just enough of a thin layer that's of clouds took. that we are seeing totality right here. We are seeing. Yep. Oh, you yep, can yep. almost see some of the what do you call that around the edge, Jim, where you have the kind of the light rays oh. coming off. Of oh, it. there we go. Right. That's that's the corona. We're seeing the corona right now. That is there it is. That's the best shot that we've had here in Oswego. And amazing. And while that's going on, I'm also taking in, there it is, the 360 degree sunset. I mean, we don't we can't look over the whole 360, wow. but our 180 view here has light on the edge. So I'm gonna take a look and see. Um, we've got, let me see, time here. I'm trying to get a time check. I'd have to say, Jim, I mean, given all the cloud cover we've had, the fact that we actually were able to see totality at all, I think, is a, is a blessing or some kind of miracle, uh, whatever you want to yeah. call it. Um, I mean, you know, when we went out of the air at, at 3 o'clock, I, I was not very hopeful. But, um, I mean, here we go. It looks like it's trying to peek through again. And thankfully, we do have that advantage of, again, of being one of the longest in totality where we can kind of uh, look through some of and these clouds. I'm not sure what the live picture is that we're looking at now. I don't. And if you look on the horizon, I think we're we're going to okay. send it to Watertown right now. Oh, okay. we're looking is at Watertown. Watertown's picture right there. That's and a pretty good you shot. You know what? Our, I think our eclipse is is oh. ending because yeah. all of a sudden here comes the light. It's like Just literally like somebody has a fader yes. and they fade it down and it's they're fading exactly up. Exactly what that is. And they're they're suddenly, I mean, fading up. Look at, I mean. Just probably 10 seconds ago, five seconds ago, like it was that. almost as dark as yes. night. And now <laughs> we're looking at the end of our eclipse. And we might get another little sliver oh. of... Might be the end of totality in Syracuse, New York, but it is not the end of totality in the country, nor with the Next Star Media station seconds, groups, WFF in Burlington, oh my God. also doing some live coverage. It's definitely and dark. we are getting some peaks of totality despite right. the cloud we'll cover. We'll step aside and allow Northeast you to right enjoy. Now. So I'm going to turn this now oh my goodness, over the to stars Burlington totality. to see what they get to experience of the great American eclipse of 2024. If there is audio, I don't see any audio on there live feed check one of their other ones oh i've got a little audio here let me check this here there we go okay wfff out of burlington vermont Oh my God, it's so amazing. This is breathtaking, isn't it? Wow. Y'all yeah. love that, Burlington?
New Yorkers and people from Mass make some noise. Oh my God, so beautiful. So tell us what's happening now, Doc. And the audio has cut out on the source. Oh, it's back. I'm going to see, I'm going to switch back to their, no, this is their broadcast coverage. Hmm. They might be having some audio issues or perhaps sending me a different feed that is not their on-air coverage. But nonetheless, we are still carrying that live picture provided by WFFF in Burlington, Vermont. This is nearly the last stop along the way of the 2024 Great American Eclipse totality in the U.S. As you've been hopefully watching, my favorite part of this live stream, this, this tracker up in the corner. It is entering into Maine, and Maine, of course, the most northeastern state that we have, and that is where totality will exit into Canada, then out over the ocean and disappear. Uh, but we have been following along throughout its journey since it first made landfall in Mexico, and just shot after shot of this. Uh, I've seen some comments, and I've experienced this as well, where the, you see the same I think I saw the, the word crone, uh, cone used, but same part of the corona of the sun peeking out from the moon, covering up the disk. And just depending on the camera, depending on the telescope, depending on the lens used, the vividness that we've been able to witness has been impressive. I, for one, am most interested to see what NASA is able to gather, what the, those researchers who have been looking forward to this and planning with their instruments, what they're able to gather out of this. All right, we are exiting totality in Burlington, Vermont. The diamond has appeared. We missed Bailey's beads, and they're going to have to put their filter back on any moment now because that sun, as we've said, man, it's totality or nothing. As soon as you... you back put, on, everyone. There we go. Wow, that was absolutely incredible. Whoa. Did you get goosebumps, Lauren? Definitely. Oh, oh for sure. Mike, it's... It what was interesting to me more than anything, oh, and this is a live look right now at Jay's Peak, was just surrounding the corona and some of the flares and the pink colors that we saw around it. Oh my goodness. And, you know, it's just silent right now. And it's, it's very, it's you getting hear... lighter. The sun's coming back up. Yeah. But, and now we're seeing it on TV from a bit of a different angle. Okay, you we get back in our seats now. <laughs> yeah. We are live in Colchester, and <sighs> we have a conference room right in front of us. And yep. while it was so dark, I mean, the lights are on in the conference room, and it, you know, you could, you would think it was eight o'clock at night. Uh, the lights in our parking lot have turned on. Um, I believe Jay Peak uh, right now is reaching totality. Let's uh, take a live look at uh, Isabel and Taylor's shot right now. They have the most incredible yeah. view. What did we just witness? I mean, that's why I put my sunglasses back on in preparation of the sun coming back out. But this was unreal. Something I never imagined. We saw, I don't know what kind of star, or if it was a planet, but we saw in addition to the moon over the sun, we saw a planet or a star. It looked so I'm going to cut away from WFFF. I love that we're hearing the reactions, but apparently I do have one more shot of totality to bring you. Um, this going back to our NASA telescope partner feeds, and there we just entered it wherever this particular telescope is located. I just saw them take their filter off, and so here we are witnessing. This is the, the final shot that I have for you on this live stream of the Great American Eclipse, this April 8th, 2024 totality across the U.S. It has been quite the hour for me. I, my, my only regret is that I'm not seeing it in person, but I would not have been able to do this live stream if I had taken the day off and driven down uh, into Indiana somewhere. One really neat thing that I've noticed, and this just goes back to what Brian James and I were talking about with the science of it all, was the 
the way the shadow changed shape, if you've been watching that tracker in the top corner like I have, it has elongated as it has moved from the southwest up into the northeast. And to, to see not only from the sky in a way, but then from the ground, those, those changes in totality and witness experience after experience is brought to us by our local next star stations. This has been its own unique experience. Um, I appreciate everyone that has joined me for it. I'm seeing a lot of comments coming in from YouTube and the Hill where we've been live streaming there. My YouTube page, Facebook pages across the station group. This is our, our final totality watching that tracker. It is exiting. It is now into Canada and the tail end of it uh, making its way towards that most northeastern U.S. border. Brian James is going to be joining me here as soon as this last shot ends so we can get a nice breakdown from that person who got to experience it for himself live with us here on this live stream. And it was his first. We'll find out if it was his last or if he's suddenly become an umberphile and he'll be making travel plans to witness more of them. Uh, I, hope, I hope some people out there who have joined this live stream got to see it in person and then found us either before or after. Look at that. Crank the tunes one last time here as we get our last bit of totality on the live stream. So long, totality. Thanks for visiting. While we see the sun reemerge, we may not, I'm not going to bring his face up just yet, but I am going to bring his audio in. Brian James back with us after absorbing everything that has happened uh, in the last, not even hour at this point. Yes. So what, what was it like? I mean, reflecting on it, what do you remember? What emotions do you have that remain? Talk us through your own experience, your first true totality. It's, it's so unique. To be in totality, I, you know, being in partial eclipse, partial eclipses in the past, to see totality is an entirely different experience. Because when, when you get the partial eclipse, you're like, oh yeah, it kind of got a little dimmer, and and it was kind of neat to see. Uh, but when you get to that point of totality, and everything gets to a point where it looks like uh, about uh, maybe an hour, maybe you know, 45 minutes to an hour after sunset, you had that little hint of glow on the horizon. But mm -hmm. you also like the clouds that we had, some of the scattered clouds still had a little bit of whiteness color to them. And you could start to see a few stars. And it's, 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 oh, uh, my, my wife and I, Lindsay, were talking about this afterwards. And yeah. she said it felt mean. And that's kind of a good way to describe it. It does. It feels like it's almost a dream state where everything around you is, is darkened, but it's the middle of the day. You know it's the middle of the day, <laughs> but your, your senses, everything else around you is saying it's nighttime. It's 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 getting closer to this. And you could feel the temperature drop. Uh, some of the street lights started to come on, and it's surreal. And I think that's probably the best word, best words, dreamlike. 
and surreal. It was an amazing experience. And yes, I will be looking for an opportunity to go see nice. another one. I probably all have to wait until 2045 for for that. But I, you know, I'll look at what the other ones are, where they're where it's available, and yeah. you know, hey, maybe a road trip is in store. There you go. Uh, or, or we could take the show on the road. We'd be like, hey, Nexar, how how amazing was that live stream? So amazing. Send Brian and I to Spain for that that one that's yeah, coming. Yeah, let's, let, let's, have, let's have Brian and, Sh- and Chip take the show on the road. <laughs> so my interpretation <laughs> of what you described was what you were witnessing was like conflicting with what you were feeling. You had these instincts kicking in of it's nighttime, but your brain was like, no, 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 it's 2 yes. o'clock in the afternoon. Yes, a sensory confusion is probably a good way to describe <laughs> it because yeah. you you know what you're supposed to and and what you're actually seeing. It it does it it messes with your mind a little bit. And when it's done, you kind of after a couple of minutes, you think like, did that happen? Did, did that really happen? It's just it's it's neat. It really neat. Excellent. All right, I'm bringing you back up just so that we can wave goodbye to you, Brian James, uh, the newest and only so far. <laughs> meteorologist for the Nexstar Weather Center. That's a whole different project that Nexstar is working on. Um, me as a member of the Nexstar Media Wire and Brian, I'm sure we're going to work together in the future, whether it's another we- weather-related live stream or just um, putting some cool videos together. So I'm excited to see what you and I can create. And uh, I want to thank everybody that joined us on this live stream as we witnessed totality from start to finish. Any final words, Mr. James? If you get the experience to experience total solar eclipse at any point in the future, try to do it. It's a, it's an awesome opportunity. And I know a lot of folks, either whether it was clouds or just couldn't get to totality at next chance, at next time, see if you can do it because it is absolutely worth it. And thanks, everyone, for, for tuning in and, and, and spending some time with us and, and, and your comments and uh, kind words. And uh, yeah, next our weather center. We'll be talking more about Ooh, that yeah. coming up in uh, days, weeks, and months to come. I'm excited to hear it. All right, on behalf of Brian, myself, Chip, next our media, we thank you all for joining us, and I hope you had a wonderful experience with the Great American Total Eclipse of 2024.